We here? Greetings from Lake Yels in uh, this gorgeous corner of Denmark as we gear up for a Saturday afternoon of racing action and what a program of action we are looking forward to. My name is Dave McLeod. It's good to be sitting in the commentary box alongside my partner in crime, Ivan Lawler, well fed from lunch and looking forward to what we've been sizing up, Ivan, as a really great array of races. Two races this afternoon. First off, the K1 women with all the usual suspects in there. Pretty much looking forward to a head-to-head -head showdown between the two big names, and we'll come to the names later. Then later this afternoon, it's the men's K1, and that's an enormous field of extremely high quality. W women's field slightly low, s lower in numbers, but high in quality. So the medals as they stand right now. Hungary now ballooning up to 12 in total after a good morning. Spain, 10 in total, four of them gold. Being closed down by Spain there, then a smattering of medals through the rest of the field with Ireland at the bottom there with Ronan Foley's gold from yesterday's under-23 K1. Maybe one of the highlights so far this weekend. So as we head into the uh, absolutely beautiful picture of this corner of Vian, K1 senior woman, that is what is on the agenda right now. There's the ICF specs for a K1, 8 kg marathon weights. Wanda Kisley comes into this event as your world champion and as Ivan will tell you when he goes through that start list, one of the characters to beat if you harbour any intentions of getting onto that top step of the podium. There will certainly be discussion over that top step though. There's more than one other person who would like to put their name in that hat. We'll have the start list coming up soon. We've Going for the course so first, we'll have a quick diagram of the course and Dave will talk you through what the athletes have to go through. Lake Gills, start with that fantastic automated system up to the top. The full lap is the full length of the dam. It's 3,4 kilometers, takes you down to the bottom. When you go into your, that's the uh, starting lap. Once you get onto the portage laps, you go in and out of this portage, jetty takeout, beach put in. You wind your way the same way up. It's a little elbow, left-hand turn. Then gradual turns down the right against the reeds and then down to the bottom. Your lap completes and you head onto the portage again. You do one final short lap, which consists of a portage. You then go around the short turn cans, which you will see the athletes go past on all the long laps. And your finish is round about there. And they go through. And uh, that's your warm down area. So an idea of what to expect. The athletes you're going to see on water now are going to race <coughs> seven laps, six of them with portages. It's... Uh, a relatively compacted field, but it is loaded with superstars, and we're expecting the racing to be pretty intense. As far as the weather is concerned, there's a gentle westerly wind. It's sunny. It's moderate in terms of temperatures, which is pretty much ideal. Chatting to some of the athletes, the wind on the way down is certainly an advantage, but as you turn into the final finish straight, you are going into a slight headwind, and when you are in that... Uh, in the overdrive zone and have been for a while, you notice every little bit of that headwind coming into your direction. Cameraman picking out all the big names as we go through. Melina Anderson there in the blue and yellow boat, very distinctive. Milova, we've seen her so many times this weekend. And Hunger is Sofia Vorosh in the white boat. But there's your main contender. She's going to have the most to say about whether Van der Kisley can retain this title or not. Won the short course earlier this week. 4-1-7 there from South Africa, Christy McKenzie, dogged 
competitor and she will be there to the end, I'm sure. Athlete on the rise. 428 in your shot is Milova, Katarina Milova from the Czech Republic, just behind Christy. And there she is, Vanda Kisli of Hungary. In the background, right. 418 is the boat of Nina Riosa. There she, Kisli. That's your world champion right there. It'll be nervous times. And here's the full start list. Anderson in the top of the picture. She's the main contender to beat Kisley. Mackenzie will be there, I'm sure. Riosa from Estonia, man from Australia. Melissa Johnson from Great Britain. Jenny Egan Simmons from Ireland. She's always there or thereabouts. Lines up next to Vanda Kisley. It's a great lineup for her. Page two will bring us to Eva Barrios, another one of the big competitors, third at the European Championships, fourth in this last year. Hashimoto from Japan, Sofia Voros, some of you know her as Chelai Voros, but the same lady and same quality. Katrina Milova, we've seen her so many times already this weekend, as we have Maria Kolowek from Argentina. Nicole Burkett, the second of the South Africans, and Sarah Lockwood on the outside from New Zealand. No place for the faint-hearted, Ivan. That is a compact but star-studded lineup. What do you know about the South Africans, Dave? Let's start with Nicole Burkett. Well, and Andy Burkett's wife, Nikki Burkett, living down in East London, part of the training cell of the Border Canoe Club. Um, been working really hard. Trains alongside a very hard-working men's cell um, and has been in great form. Um, comes into this event placing no pressure on herself out to have a lot of fun and I've got to say that is when you find a dangerous Nikki Burkett. The other South African in the lineup is Christy McKenzie who's had uh, a year of change. She's, she's moved from one end of the country to the other. She's changed coaches. She's settled in Durban, uh, has finished her psychology degrees in a good place in her life right now, uh, being coached by um, Matt Bowman and is in good nick. Ever since she's made the move to Durban, there's been exponential improvements in her form. And if that form continues, she could make a mark here. Estonia there in the turquoise boat, just to the right of Melina Anderson. Between them will be the South African, Christy McKenzie. Are they slowly, but seemingly reluctantly, make their way towards the start line? <laughs> they're, they're not bowling us over with enthusiasm at the moment. <laughs> Everyone hanging back. Melissa Johnson there from Great Britain. Been good at home, and this is going to be a big test for her. Jenny Egan Simmons in the pink boat. Heaps of experience. Christy McKenzie in the green boat. <laughs> It's Pink a bit like your, your horse racing analogy. Normally, if you're the last and most frisky horse to go into the stalls, you take off like a missile and have a, 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 an advantage. So everybody wants to be last ones in. Jenny Egan at the front there in the light pink boat. And second up in the dark pink boat from the bottom is Nicole Burkett. Just trying to find some identity badges for you so that you can follow just even when we're getting it wrong. Get get Lawler's pen out and just scribble out Nicole and call her Nikki or Nix. Nikki, okay. I think only law enforcement officers would call her Nicole. Nikki or Nix. Eva Barrios to line up alongside Funda Kisley. I think Nix is too informal for me. I'm going to have to go Nikki. Are oh, you going Nikki? Yeah. Okay. One up from Nikki Burkett, Maria Kolowek. We saw her racing in the Masters as well. So she's had a busy week. There's Kisley, your world champion, lining up to e lining up next to rather Jenny Egan Simmons of Ireland. And oh, off, off they go. They it's Milova go. first to show four up from the bottom. Sarah Lockwood from New Zealand right in the front there. Member of North Shore Canoe Club in Auckland. It's Kisley, Barrios and Egan Simmons in the middle. Egan Simmons just going to fall into the V, which is perfect for her as the Australian comes across. Rebecca Mann, we saw her earlier this week in the under-23s as well. 
Or do we snow short course? Van der Kisley turning up the heat at the start of the women's race. Cross As comes Melina Anderson. Anderson comes zooming in from the left to join her. Egan Simmons is not going to be liking the look of that coming across because that's going to push her back down the group somewhat. So you have to line up behind the white boat. And we're all settling in. Everyone's pretty comfortable there on the far side. The South African struggling at the moment just to find a comfortable slot in this group. Yep. Barrios to the left, or to the right, rather, of Kisley. Anderson to the left. Mackenzie streetwise. She's going to tuck on on the inside. There she goes. She'll pull up onto the second diamond. Australian man in the back behind Kisley. That's an ideal place to be with a group this size. That's as tidy as you get it, it 100 is. meters in. Eva Barrios, Van der Kisley. Oh, it's a mouth-watering prospect, this for the next next hour and a bit. It's a very tense race. There's so many people with an opinion in there. Um, just trying to locate Voros, Sophia Voros. She's mm. normally in a white boat. She'll have a white shirt on. I can't see her at the moment. We're actually running through the field, courtesy of our camera angle, which is great. So Riosa there, uh, Egan there, Kolowek there. Nikki Burkett. Nikki Burkett there. Trying to force her way into a more secure place in the group. You got and that's going to be Voros on the outside of the group, just making her way up now. In the white boat. Making, yep, making heavy work of it, but she's going to get there. And she will try and squeeze out Anderson, who I'm not sure is always happy. Oh, maybe she's not going to go all the way. I'm not sure Anderson is happy to be squeezed back into the thick of the group. She likes her clear water, and she likes to be out on her own. Melissa Johnson, just the one off the back of that group. With the two Japanese athletes behind her. Kolowek from Argentina doing a good job. Milova moving out to the right. Kolowek follows her. Group slightly changed shape as Anderson takes the lead from Kisley. Anderson and Kisley will be measured. Oh, what's happening there? Whoever's in the white boat. Getting squeezed back by Milova. But more, it was, I think that's Barrios choosing to drop back. But it's getting very tight. Oh, Riosa gave up a wave that was hers all day. And Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medal ceremony for the man C1 from Australia. Men. Just hung in there. And Riosa was the one who cracked first. And she had no need to. That was her V-wave. V-wash all the way. New Zealand there behind Great Britain's Melissa Johnson and New Zealand Sarah Lockwood. Just trailing her. So the big group goes on and there it is. Boris to the side of Anderson. Kisley to the other side. We'll leave you for the medal presentation and be back soon. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalists in the C1 men. These medals will be presented by Terry Best, board member of the International Canoe Federation and assisted by Jose Andre Roman Mangas from the Spanish team. The bronze medal representing Spain.
Manuel Garrido. The silver medal representing Hungary, Martin Kova. And your gold medal and the world champion. Representing Spain, Manuel Campos. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Spain. Congratulations to our medalists. So with the presentation over, we'll get back to the group, lead group in the women's K1 as soon as we can. It still looks like a big group being led by Anderson. Hungarians either side. South African behind, Spain behind, Australia with Mann also behind. Anderson been squeezed into the V behind. Kisley, Kisley churning it up now. Boros struggling to stay with her as Barrios comes in from the side. Just, no, doesn't have any impact on Boros. It's Kisley churning on. Looks like we've lost Kolowek in the white hat in the far distance there. South Africans still there with Mackenzie and Burkett. And, Burkett. and it's a big group. There is one just dangling off the back of that group. Can't see who it is just yet. Could be Riosa from Estonia. Just struggling to maintain contact. Jenny Egan, tidy in the back, in the light pink boat, just behind the blue boat of Anderson. The green boat of Mackenzie, struggling to find a comfortable place. He's going to mm. move up behind Anderson's blue boat. That central line down behind the leader is a perfect place to be 
if she can get there. Ten athletes in that picture. And it's funny how when you look at an image like that, some athletes have a presence. And in a bunch like that, the presence of Wanda Kisley is just all-encompassing. She's a dominant character. Voros, Cello Voros, we haven't seen her on top form for the last couple of competitions. But she's certainly managing this one well so far. Not a lot of love lost between those two competitors from Hungary. Different teams. Riosa still at the back of the group. There's a decent wave there, but it's a nervy place to be. Kolowek, the paddler in the white hat, just off the back of the group. Melissa Johnson, back of the shot there, on her own at the moment, hoping that this group will break up and fragment soon so that you can start to pick off a few of the athletes. We had a couple of the starters didn't start. I haven't seen Irati Osa out there from Spain. She's on the start list that I've got. Burkett on the far side, just to the right of Milova. Chelai Voros in the white shirt, Anderson in the yellow, man in the colors of Australia, Barrios for Spain, just to the right of Barrios, Jenny Egan Simmons from Ireland. Then it's Mackenzie from South Africa in the bright green boat and from Estonia in the turquoise boat is Nina Riosa. The first portage and still another long lap away, but if this group stays like this, it'll be quite an interesting prospect. This lead bunch of 10 coming into with the natural eye shot of the impressive crowd of spectators that's gathered here at Lake Yells for a Saturday afternoon of kayaking and canoeing entertainment. They've been richly rewarded for that so far, and I suspect this one is going to go exactly the same way. The omission here is the lack of a Dane in the starting lineup, which means they'll have to focus their energy on. I mean, Hostrup did a really good job earlier in the week in the under 23s. You think it'd be worth a punt going in this, but you, maybe she's doing K2 tomorrow. So, yeah, it's a uh, team decision. Jenny Egan Simmons looking comfortable in that pink boat. Christy McKenzie is quite a streetwise paddler. She's got a nice position there. Just she's resting straight she's down the middle of the group, in a V behind, yeah, behind Anderson. Everything's covered. She's one of those naturally get on with it kind of personalities. So, I think resting and biding her time is is not her natural game. But she's certainly being wise about staying right where she is for now. Two laps like that would be ideal. The crazy thing here is that Kisley, whose main competitor, is Anderson. And Kisley is putting in her work when Anderson has the easiest job. So for me, if I'm Kisley, I, just I need to know anterior, exactly where Anderson is. And if she's having a rest, I'm not going to do work. I'll do work. I'll change, I would change the group, make someone else lead, put Anderson in a position where she's not resting. Okay. There's absolutely no benefit to me doing a lot of work at the front where my main competitor is doing nothing behind me. This is sucking life out of Kisley's petrol tank, but not from Anderson. And that's, I think of that as a mistake. Making their way around the boys, no overlaps, no drama. All pretty clean and composed.
Group shapes changed slightly, which leaves McKenzie without a solid V at the back there. So that's Kisley pulling the whole of the first lap and showing no signs of <coughs> relinquishing that position at the front. So McKenzie needs Barrios to go left here. Which she's, is she trying to do it? Maybe not. She's happy on the tail of Vorosh. Here she goes. She's moving up to the left of Vorosh. They'll take Egan Simmons over and Mackenzie gets her slot back behind Anderson. They were all waiting for that and they all owe Barrios a vote of thanks for the effort she just put in. Jenny Egan, a little offline there as she picked up her drink straw and that's allowed Mackenzie to move up 1v and Egan will slip in behind the blue boat of Anderson. That was just a little error, but had no consequences. It's still Riosa who's picking up the pieces at the back of this group. Away goes Vorosh. Anderson will move in behind her. Mackenzie has to move left. No, Anderson's, Anderson's pushing pushed through. Push between the two. That's it, a little bit unusual. Just rattle the Van der Kisley cage, I think. I don't. I, yeah, no. Kisley has to move in. Anderson has to move back. She had. Now, man's trying it on Milva. McKenzie's asking very politely, very politely, if she could perhaps have that spot, but she gets edged off that diamond by Melina Anderson. So McKenzie. Decisions to make about whether she goes up the left or stays where she is. Chelai Vorosh leading for now. Kisley tracks her, as does Barrios on the left. Anderson has just spent nearly a whole lap in the V-Wash. And that, to me, mm -hmm. is a mistake from anyone who thinks they're going to be beating her at the end. Christy McKenzie after making a bid for that diamond spot, which she lost out to Anderson. Now sitting on the left extremity of that bunch. As the woman came past, the crowd gathered here on the side of Lake Yells. The world's most beloved or hated musical instrument was heard there's absolutely no gray area in between you either love it or hate it that's it listen to it in the background there known as what ivan the vuvuzela the vuvuzela give it give it there's give some it. there's there's a common term for the people who use them as well but i don't think i can use it no. on air <laughs> not in public you can't amusing on their own i think there's only one of them in the stands here put 80,000 of them in the stadium and it becomes a, a little different. So the big group travels back up to the top turn. Looks like it's going to stay compact and complete until the first portage. On her own there still, Melissa Johnson. It's a long day on your own. Kolowek is off the group in front, and that'll be... They, there mm. you see Kolowek just there. That's her chase. Those two can work together and at least have some company on the journey. As the two at the back have, which is New Zealand and Japan, with Sarah Lockwood and Manon Hashimoto. That big bunch drives up to the top. This is the downwind leg with the westerly wind at their backs. two tail enders at least they've got company they can share the leads make the journey a little more bearable Sarah Lockwood on the right current Kiwi Marathon champion Nikki Burkett has been 
left out or is content to be left out on the outskirts of this bunch for the whole race so far? She's third out. And third out, actually, the waves start to fall for you again. It's the second one out. The waves are slightly uncomfortable, which is why Christy McKenzie isn't moving up the left of Eva Barrios because that wave isn't particularly helpful. As Burkett, third one out, it starts to be useful again. That's the fourth one. So we've got an aerial shot of the group on there. Quite tricky. In fact, yeah, let's have a look a at... Um, too small. So we go live still. Ivan's going to take out his scribbling pen in a minute if the guys in the van can get ready to slot that in since we've got a behind view of the bunch as it races up to the top of Lake Yels. You can have a look at that group as it's assembled at the moment and just enter into that discussion about where the good wave is, where the second wave is and where the... Uh, it's a little, little bit of a small picture to be drawing on, but what I would be worried about in this race is this... All oh, right, it's Dave not... Sorry, I... On the drawing tablet. Just have an overview. If we can get an overview of the whole group on the drawing tablet, we can maybe do draw a few lines on it for you. Perfect. So, so here we go. What I would be worried about in this group is one of my main competitors is, hang on, let me get my pen going. Struggling to make a mark on the screen, so we might come back to you with this later. We will. Oh, there you go. One of my main competitors is right tucked in the V wash there. That's Melina Anderson. She's been there for such a long time and she is resting. The reason Christy McKenzie, who is here, doesn't move up to this position on the side is that she prefers that half V behind Eva Barrios. That second wave out isn't the favorite. On the right side of the group, we've got four coming down the side there, three and four. And the third and fourth position there are not too bad. It's it, the third position here, rather, is not too bad. It's just this second one here that's a problem. So around the turn they go. Group thins on the inside. We might let you down a bit on the technology. That would be my fault. So apologies for that. We can have another dot at that while we've, while, while we've got that image captured. Meanwhile, the group's fragments just a little. This mm. could be telling. Riosa in trouble. She's the one closest to the turn still. Somebody is churning that up at the front. Those two together now. That would be a relief for Johnson. Certainly, Riosa was being strung out at the back of the group when we last saw them. We'll get back to that front group in a moment. It's been a pretty pedestrian and unflustered lap and a bit so far, but as they're coming down the uh, return leg, they know that they're going to be heading into that turn as a big group and, of course, into the portage. And the last thing you want is to assemble too busy or too irritated a bunch of paddlers going into that portage. It's just going to get messy for somebody. So Johnson and Kolowak going around the top turn together. They've got company for the journey now. And there's the front group. And it looks like it's all come back together. It was Kisley doing the damage. I'm not seeing Riosa in that group anymore. It might be because she's hidden behind someone, but I don't think so. I think we're one down. There she is, mm -hmm. just coming around the reeds on the inside. That's not in contact with the group. Camera angle foreshortens it, and Riosa is off the group. 30 metres back, according to 
the stats we're getting from the GPS trackers. The GPS trackers are in the little lunch boxes you'll see just behind the paddlers' cockpits on the back deck. Wonder Kisley, a picture of determination as always. So now, now is Kisley's time where it's worth doing some work. We've got Anderson two washes out now. So even if she if she works hard now, at least Anderson has to do something, at least match her work rate. We've got Barrios on the V now behind her. But Anderson finally out of that V and in a position where at least you can put something into her. Christy McKenzie trying to work her way up past Melina Anderson. This very much has to feel that Anderson is banking on her portage in. She's going to get to one of the portages, whether it's the first one or the last one. And I think we're going to see that's where she's going to play the joke up and run extremely hard. That wind, wind is picking up. It you is notice blustering. that at the same time I did. Those reeds in the background are quite busy. And this is a full-on headwind, not only for the return lap, but for the final sprint lap when the tank tends to be empty. You can see the waves across Lake Yels. And that's a nine paddler bunch coming into the portage. This is going to be intense. The scope for error is heightened by the, the density of that bunch as they come in. So there might be value in that being strung out. I wonder if... I wonder Kisley has a plan. She'll be fine. She'll be well, in the front. Well, Kisley's got, unless something changes, Kisley's got Anderson trapped on the inside of the, the turn. So Anderson will be, she's, she's a sharp racer. She will be aware of that and will possibly try to move up before we get to the turn. But at the moment, everyone's comfortable. Milliver, been safe in the front few all the way so far. Egan and Mann been tucked away in the back for the whole journey. So they're doing okay. Chalai Voros also just on the left of Van der Kisley. So Hungary, Hungary, Czech Republic, South Africa, Spain and Sweden make up the next row. Australia and South Africa make up the next row and Egan nicely tucked at the back. Kisley leads, Borosh, Burkitt, Barrios, Anderson, Mann. Rebecca Mann looking around. Very determined looking Christy McKenzie, Jenny Egan. Actually Jenny, Jenny looking a little bit, a little bit worn at the back there. Maybe not enjoying the headwind. I'm not so sure that Jenny's done as much training this year as we've seen her do before. I think it's been a, a bit of a more casual year for her. Movement in the group. Man goes up to the right-hand side. She's going to take on it's a Burkitt. She's done that. She's going to take on Milliver. She's done that. Oh, she's going the whole hog. And she's going to get to the side of Kisley. Squeeze out Anderson. Huge move no, from Rebecca Mann. That was fantastic work. Everyone else moves over nicely. And it's Egan who finds herself in a spot of bother here. There aren't many lifelines there for Egan. She's moving up slowly, though, as the group slows down. Rebecca Mann, super impressive. Super impressive. Egan moving in, just trying to see where they are. They've got two minutes to the portage. Milliver moving out to hold Egan off. She doesn't want to get trapped in on the corner. That's and bad that's news for Egan. That's great uh, news for Nikki Burkett because she's been able to ride that wave and then slingshot onto the wave. Egan's going to arrive at the portage already a bit breathless. Mm -hmm. We're seeing Anderson now. Anderson moves on Voros. <coughs> He's going to try and make it stick. Voros is trying to hold her off. It's going to be tight. There's the big effort there. 
and Anderson fails to get round Chelai Vorosh and finds herself pinned on the inside of the turn. So that was, compared to Rebecca Mann's effort, that was an unimpressive effort from Anderson. Well, warning shot fired by Rebecca Van. Hasn't rattled Van der Kizzi's cage, but everybody else in that bunch has sat up and paid notice what she's capable of doing. Egan Moore settled round, at the back now. Round the turn they come. It is going to be nine boats coming into the portage. Kisley leaving lots of room on the inside of that turn. Anderson being pinballed back down through the field a little bit. She look, always looks a little bit uncomfortable once the group closes in around her. So, Portage 1. It's cast an eye over. Van der Kisley's going left. Barrios right with Anderson. And Anderson Miller, getting caught in the Anderson traffic. in all sorts of trouble. Badly managed from her. Kisley out quickly. She's out, though. She's out and running. Egan, the last to get out. And this is going to be really tough for Egan. Kisley running strong. Whole bunch of the girls running in to go and get juice at the end of their portage. Anderson running hard to save a problem that she created. Barrios with the lead to Hungarians. Melina Anderson just a little bit further off than she would like at the end of this portage. She's okay. Miller. She's going to be the fourth in the front group of four. And this could be a split. Well, I'm sure it is going to be a split in the group. Kisley away with Chelai Vorosh and Barrios. Quick look over the right shoulder and to see just... She saw where Anderson was and she thinks she can put a little bit more into it. Anderson riding the big waves out to the side. It's a long journey back still. And Kisley is trying to do some damage here. Effectively too, because Anderson doesn't seem to be that hell-bent on getting onto the wave now. She's rather looking over her left to see who else is coming to work together to try and reel in that deficit. And it's Milliver. And, yep. And Mackenzie. Who are some way off. Burkitt's off the back of that as well. Anderson working hard. I think she will catch in the end. She's but it would make more sense for her to go into line. She needs to haul. drop the hammer and get back on. No, it's she's, a long way. She's haul. stranded in no man's land there. It is a long way off. This is significant. She's falling back to the second group faster than she's closing to the first. That gap's getting bigger by the second now. Anderson's resigned to group two at the moment. Argentina coming through the portage, enjoying the applause of the crowd. With Melissa Wonder Johnson Kisley, when from she, Great Britain. Wonder Kisley, when she took off, sensed what was happening. And there was a look over her shoulder to Eva Barrio saying, vamos, let's go, let's go. There, let's, there let's. were two stages to it. So she left with the intention of making Anderson work hard to catch up. Mm -hmm. Then when she had the glance over her shoulder, I think she was surprised by how far Anderson was behind and thought, you know what, let's give it a go. And she's gone. She, yeah, they, you know, there's a big gap between that front three and you've got two Hungarians in the front three and Eva Barrios. That's three medals right there. And there's a lot of motivation between those three to make sure that Anderson does not come back. But that's a strong chase pack, isn't it? You've got the two South Africans, you've got Milova and Anderson. And I think Anderson, when she gets her breath back. So that was bad portage management on Anderson's part. She decided she was going to get out early. She could have gone round the people who... I think it was Barrios who stopped so early on that pontoon. Instead of going round, she kind of blocked in behind and waited. She kind of looked like she had a pre-thought strategy to tuck in right at the first exit point on that it pontoon. It might be worth having a replay of the and beginning was, of that portage if that's an option for us. 
Love putting our production team under pressure. Yep. New Zealand and Japan. Monon Hashimoto in the white boat coming into the portage. They are away from the scrap that's going on at the front of the race. Sarah Lockwood. Certainly got the legs on Hashimoto. Good handles. Short, tight handles, but serving the job that a handle is there to provide. Yep, as they come in before. Yep. Yep. So we have an opportunity now to have a look at what happened at that takeout and the pickle that Melina Anderson found herself in. So have so a look at this. Blue Simon. boat, yellow tips. Anderson finds herself on the inside of Barrios and banks on Barrios going long. Yep. Barrios gets out early. And Anderson has nowhere to go. But her nose is outside Barrios. She could have come along on the outside of her. She was trapped in a little bit by the other athlete there. I can't remember who it was. But you can see how far Anderson is down. She's still on the pontoon there. And Kisley is well into the grass. There she comes around the corner. She runs extremely well. Straight past Rebecca Mann, who, to be fair, doesn't run quite as well. But these three, all together... And that's where the gap came. Anderson's the next to reach the water, but just one, two, three, four, five seconds behind. And this is the interesting bit. There's a look over the shoulder now. Oh, we oh, just, just going to miss that. that. Never well, mind. We're back to three. Great, great replay. Well there's done the, to our team. There's the lead three. So thank you to the team for grabbing that replay. And it's still three boats. This is a big break. They're making this one really count. Wondering who's doing most of the pulling here. It seems to be Kisley, but she's going to need her help at some point. 70 metres back to Anderson. But it's a there chase group. A Only of three now. We're one South African down. It was the pink boat of Nikki Burkett has left that second chase group. That's not too far behind that second pack. This top end of Lake Yell's relatively sheltered. They'll get some protection from the headwind until they take that first right-hand bend around the reeds. But it's been Van der Kisley who's been cracking the whip at the front from the very get-go. We're right on the edge of the uh, comms range of our drone flying down at the bottom there, so we do tend to get a, a little bit of breakup on the image. Anderson leaving the work to Milova at the moment. I'd say if you're a Swedish supporter, that is not a positive sign. She could be just taking a couple of minutes and we'll start a charge back to the front. We know from previous races she's happy to work on her own. There's Burkett, just off the back of that group of three. On her own. This race is loosening up now, and that's going to suit Christy McKenzie. And there goes Anderson. McKenzie's trying to stay with her. She saw that. So this is a significant period now, I would say. That gap of 20 seconds Anderson has to chip into it now Egan on her own man on her own man did everything right coming into that portage and just hasn't got the legs on the land that some of those other other ladies have well that portage has shrapnel the sponge so the gap was 20 seconds when we get the next time check it will tell you 
what Anderson is capable of doing on her own. She's leading that chase pack now. This is basically one-on-one -on -one Anderson versus Kisley as it stands. These two hanging on to Kisley and getting their free ride. The other two hanging on to Anderson and getting their free ride. But this is a game between Kisley and Anderson. Burkitt looking over her shoulder, uh. waiting for company. And that's the company of Mann and Egan. There was a stage when she was willing to grind and just try and get back on on her own, but that's... That yeah, but look, look at you're trying to grind down. You're trying yep. to grind down the two best in the business. Hell-bent on, on trying to hurt each other. Because it is shifting there. That yeah. is proper. Chelai Voris happy to stay on the half V behind Kisley. <laughs> Barrios. I imagine pretty happy there. She hasn't got to do anything. She only has to stay with him. Impressive display from Kisley looking over her shoulder. She'll measure the gap and she's going to take the risk of someone else leading for a bit and that someone else is Barrios. Well, she's led from the gun, hasn't that she? That might be because the others are too close and she wants to give up the run or it might be because they're far enough away that she's happy. We can't tell from the camera angle. So it's Eva Barrios of Spain who goes to the front. I think the gap is growing. I agree, Ivan. It's 62 metres. We need that in seconds because I don't think we remembered what the meterage was, did we, Dave? That little... It was 20 seconds last time. That little 500 metre burn that Van der Kisley put on has really hurt the three chasers. And if you wanted to use that as a quick dipstick test of Van der Kisley... Versus Melina Anderson, I think Vanda won that one. Eva Barrios pulling with Vanda Kisley on her It's about the right. same still. Still about that same 20 seconds, but now significantly, Kisley is resting while Anderson is working. And if Barrios and Chelai Voros can just maintain the gap, then Kisley can grow it each time she leads. Kisley will be resting, keeping an eye on the chase group the whole time. And when she feels ready, probably throw in another minute or two to stretch that gap another five seconds if she can. In the background, you see Mann and there Burkett. She is looking over her shoulder. Having a chat with a Hungarian yeah. friend. It's a, the gap is shrinking while Kisley isn't leading. And there's the chasing bunch with Melina Anderson doing all the hard work at the front. Miller. There goes Kisley. Yep. Remember that gap. It's now 42 metres. That's a 20 metre gain for Anderson. But Kisley will try and stretch that out again. And that just chips into the mindset of Anderson. Anderson will be thinking, ah, not her again. <laughs> not her leading. Because I don't see Anderson getting any help from those other no. two. None at all. They're both passengers on this yeah. trip. Kisley is doing a lot of the dirty work in this race. She's a machine, we know that. See how the speed line just dropped down steadily as Barrios took up that pull. Dropped well below what Kisley needed. And there's, frankly, no need for Barrios to do the work. This is Kisley's job to do. It's Kisley started this with a me versus Anderson attitude. 
Well, for both Barrios and Chalagoros, they have everything to gain from Van der Kessley doing the dirty work. Yep. If they want to stand any chance of maybe shading her at the end for gold or picking up a, a higher step medal, let her do as much of the dirty work as she wants. And if it means she gets edgy and drives it and they get towed along for the ride, they're not complaining. So our gap went from 60 metres to 40, while Barrios led... led Anderson now relaxed again into her own rhythm. Kisley going hard again. They're on lap three now. So the gap is not very big. They're directly opposite us in commentary now. Van der Kisley goes into the turn. This is not over by any means. Anderson Towing. will run hard. Towing Zafir Silavoros and Eva Barrios around with her. Into the portage they come. Van der Kisley was superb on the last one. And there's... That gap is not... Anderson is going to close It's this not gap. that big. She is... Yeah, she's going to close Kisley it at some point. is certainly not getting away for all that work. The chase bunch coming around the top turn cans. Here they come to the portage. Kisley going left. Out of her boat. Smooth. And she's gone. Boros, the one to rise last. Kisley running hard again. Barrios tossing her juice bag Still a over. significant gap. Here comes Anderson and she's running full on. That is full on running. See that every inch she's taken out of her group. She's going to be in this portage on her own. The group were only passengers anyway, but Anderson is going to be on her own between this group and her group wow. after this. She has opened up a massive gap on her own group. She's only... Chelo Voros is in the water. She's fallen in. So now it's Kisley and Barrios and oh my word. Anderson on her own. And it's going to be one-on-one -on -one again. Voros is in all sorts of trouble. She's only just getting back in her boat now. And away she goes with Mackenzie and Milliver. There's no way back for her now. The two big guns are both in front of her. There's Kisley. There's Barrios. And it's going to be three boats in the front group this time on the next lap. I'm guessing that would be... Wow. Okay, Ivan, I'm giving some homework to our production team. If we could in any way find the camera footage from the portage camera at the put-in, which was right in front of Zofia Chalavoros. Love to see what happened there. That's a, that's a big ask, Dave. It wasn't even on screen. No, these, these guys are hot. They're damn good. I'm, I'm throwing them some that's, serious that's, homework That's here. testing. So, Kisley now... Your own would work. Let's do it. Kisley has now resigned herself to doing this whole race by herself. Anderson, pretty much the same. Although if she can get to Kisley, there is a rest when she gets there. Camera angles there. Very, very difficult to judge distances. But if Barrios had caught Kisley, she would be a lot closer to her on that side view. There's a big gap back to Barrios. I've got to say, on those portages, if you look at the report cards, I'm giving two A-pluses. <laughs> one to Anderson and one to Van der Kisley. Yep. Both superb. The distance stayed about the same. Let's have a look at that portage, if we can, on slow-mo. So Kisley out first, up and running. No mistakes at all. Quick. It's Voros, the third athlete there, that has the error getting in because she's rushed. Here comes... Anderson, Anderson on the right. Now, I have never seen anyone run like this. She gets up to speed around there, and look at that. She is shifting, man. These other girls have nothing on that. So Anderson has decided she can catch. Now it's let's this watch. bit here. It's the third boat of Voros as she gets in. Kisley's going to be clean away. So is Barrios. Voros, in a little rush there, boom, she sits oh, down she straight over. over the top. And now it all goes wrong for her. She doesn't even get back in in time for Anderson. And she goes back to the chase. A too, second empty. Behind Anderson. I saw her 
Great footage. So the expression in her face. Great footage from our production team. That was some running from Anderson. Give you and the team one. Uh, Anderson's going to close down Barrios. I just don't think Barrios is going to give Anderson any help on the real job, which is catching Kisley. So the Van der Kisley train keeps chugging. We're back to 67 metres, which was what we were at the top turn on the last lap. So that gap gets smaller, gets bigger. Anderson and Kolowek running through, not Anderson, ugh, Johnson and Kolowek running through that portage together. I think they're going to be together for much of the remainder of this journey. Exciting times up at the front. As these two get in, they'll leave pretty much together. Kolowek a little bit slow into her boat. Melissa Johnson. So Berrios probably from happy for Melina Anderson to come up alongside and hell just. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Uber, Otherwise Uber. She was I'm waiting on her for my own. Uber here. Yeah. She'll get on the Anderson train and she will ride that train for as long as she can. Best seats in the house to the duel between these two juggernauts. That's pretty much guaranteed Barrios a medal now with uh, Voros taking that swim. There's no way back for her. So Kolowek and Johnson carry on together. Which is such uh, staggering to just try and comprehend that. A slide over the cockpit is one thing. She then looked like she had dropped something. I think it might be a juice or a drinking system because she was scrambling for that, then realized there was water to be emptied, did a half-baked job of emptying it, put the boat down, realized there was more water, had to go back for the full over-the-shoulder empty, and the damage was done. It's going to be an intriguing journey around this lake. That's someone who doesn't want to be caught right there. And frankly, it's not looking like she's going to be caught. We're going to have a four-boat second group. And so who is that for? That's Barrios, Anderson, Mackenzie, and Milova. Yeah. And it's the Hungarian on her own behind that group of four. And I think the chase might be over. No, there goes Anderson leading again. She's had a little break. At the side of Barrios and back to the task in hand. But if Mackenzie and Milliver caught up to Anderson and Barrios, that tells you that Anderson and Barrios are not moving at the same speed mm -hmm. as Kisley. Not, at the front. I agree. Sarah Lockwood of New Zealand. North Shore Kayak Club, which makes her an Aucklander coming into the portage. Behind her, Japan. Off comes the uh, juice bag. Team's well drilled. They're there oh, to pick it up. She's running well. Running very well. Such a proud sporting nation, New Zealand. I wonder what they call their canoeing team, their paddling team. Rugby players are the All Blacks, and Black Caps, Silver Ferns. I wonder what they like to call themselves. Maybe they'd like to send us a note. Japan shouldering their boat. And running neatly and efficiently down to the pudding. 
got to say I'm a fan of running with the boat on the shoulder. Just Me too. Love your boat. Love your boat. Protect your rudder. The Japanese haven't quite got the hang of it, though. They always have the weight of the boat too far back. They have the weight of the boat behind them instead of in front of them. And that's a, an awkward wow. way to run. So 35 seconds now, the gap. It was 20 at one point. 35 is probably enough to hold it for now and then put another 10 seconds in later on. But Anderson's doing the work in group two and she's the only one there. Chela Voros just off the back of that second group and she's fueled entirely by fear at this stage, the fear of being left on her own. There's safety in the group. The Van der Kisley Meteor shooting across Lake Jels. Anderson has had enough of taking up the pull at the front. Christy McKenzie's been ushered into the, the front yeah, row. Every time anyone but Anderson leads that group, they're going to be losing time on Kisley. Yeah. Anderson... I think just wants a bit of a breather on the diamond. And I think she would have made it clear to Christy McKenzie that she needs to bring her A game now. No offense to Christy McKenzie, but her A game doesn't match Kisley's A game. No, I don't think there is. There are not many people walking the planet no. that, that have a, a comparable A game. But Christy has got it, and she's, she's a scrapper. She's got a huge heart. She'll be up for this, and she's in a good position right now. The problem is at some stage, and it won't be in the too distant future, the, the motivation in that second group turns to medals, not winning. Yeah, yeah. It's a seriously tall order to expect that group to try and close that deficit, certainly in the, the next half lap yeah. or so. Anderson has got the legs to run away from that group on the next portage again, if she wants to. It'll be interesting to see if she's motivated enough to do that or whether she wants the safety. Now that gap's massive now, and it's, isn't it? Oh. As soon as Anderson isn't on the front of that group, there's only one outcome. She comes around those reeds into the blustery part of the course. 45 seconds now. She's just pulled another 10 seconds. Just watch the water coming off with paddle blades and you'll get a sense of just how strong the wind is there. It does look quite bleak out there. Christy McKenzie leads the chasing four around the edge of those reeds. But they're no longer chasing. The second bunch. Yeah. No. Kisley out on her own, clear. It's almost as if she's got a different set of rules that apply to her. They seem to be struggling into the wind, and she's cruising. She knows you know, if you can pull a minute, then she's safe for the whole day. Yeah. Shall I Voros on her own behind that group, My not making any ground on the group? Goodness me. It's a fairly intimidating picture that when she gets into a zone like that in a bubble where she's got no distractions, no sideshows, but has just the sense of purpose, she becomes almost a cyborg. She just has this capacity to keep going in, in the red line zone. That was Egan and Burkett at the back of that shot a little a few seconds ago. And they've got company by the look of it. So strong and so well organized. She's got the luxury now. Of, oh. oh, and it's all going sideways. That was very amateur. That was Anderson changing round. She should have just popped out the back of that group instead, clipped the back of Mackenzie's boat. That's the way to upset your people in the group, that is. When you need friends. <laughs> Milova is going to be nothing like. Absolutely nothing like Kisley. This gap's going to be a minute. By the time we get to the portage, I reckon. Uh, there's a great perspective of the cavernous gap as Milliver does her best at the front to try and keep the pace high. At the moment, it's damage control rather than attack. I 
think they've forgotten all idea of catching. This is the scrap for silver, I think. She'd fancy a silver. There's four people there who would at this stage. 180 meters. There's your minute right there. So we've pulled the minute just before the second, no, not second, third portage. So she's going to be through the portage and out the other side before they come in. And the gap looks way more than a minute, or I think she's pulling five seconds every minute at yep. least at the moment. And to be blunt, I mean, there's not a lot you can do if you catch Van der Kisley in this sort of mood. I'm trying to think if there's any other paddlers we could parachute into that would possibly change this equation, and I can't think of any current ones. Down to the bottom turn can she comes. She won't have a good view of the damage she's done until she gets right up to the top turn, really. Yeah, as she goes around that last boy, I think she can, well, she knows she's not under any pressure, so she can actually afford the luxury of a glance over her left shoulder. And, and they're miles behind. Milliver still leading that group and losing time very, very rapidly. There she, there's, there's the look. look. And a second look. Unbelievable. She, she surprised Third, herself. You are kidding me. She surprised herself there, I think. That will be... An immense relief to her. Oh, two things. An immense relief. And I think she will just get this charge of adrenaline saying, is it this good? Could it possibly be this good this early on? She knows she hasn't got to go over the red line at any stage now. Yeah. Kisley comes into the portage, out onto the jetty. That is a great shot to show the difference. Ah. Running superbly. Uh, ovation as she comes in front of the crowd here in the grandstands at Lake Yels. She's not being distracted by any of it, not even a glance up to the big screen. It's, this is Kisley in lethal mode. The others still in race not bubble. into the portage. Oh. She's going to be out and away before the others even come in. The others just coming round the bottom of the turn now. Oh. They've still got another 10 seconds before they get to the portage. Here we go. Anderson right with Milliver. Barrios and Mackenzie left. Wonder Kisley's risk here, her only risk is going bang. And there's no it's reason for her to have to now. go there. No. Yeah. She's done... She's done enough of, enough work to be able to put herself into a comfort zone. If the gap was 20 the seconds, there oh. is a high risk of that. But Anderson Christine. is going to try and run away from them by the look of it. Who's in trouble here? It's Christy, McKenzie. Barrios also flagging off the back of the sponge. She needs to sharpen her put in. Anderson is good. Ooh, is a little, a little slow. Shaky. And Not a great takeoff from either the of the three. Will any of them catch Anderson? Anderson's not sticking around. Anderson's She's your route to a medal here. The other Hungarian boat. They're all closing up again. That's good work by Christy because she was left reeling off the back of this bunch at the portage.
juggernaut display from Van der Kisli. Oh, Cello Voros. Mm. A long, long way down now on that group of four. Just getting in the water now. We've got Burkitt and Egan. And this group reforms. There's your leader. It's hard even to see the chase pack. We had to send our drone into air traffic control space to get that shot. And there's not a lot of urgency in this chasing four. None at and all. And again, now. withdraw the term trace chasing the, the bunch of four. Rebecca Man. She just didn't quite have it on that first portage when the whole group was together. She fell back. Really impressive on the first lap, though, first two laps. The Aussies comfortably in. And off on lap five. Anderson on the right. Barry Would really the white. white. Milliver in the blue and Mackenzie in, in the, the green boat. Black and white shirt. Riosa running through. And I just get a sense that the rule book's been rewritten for this race now. I think everybody is content to resign Van der Kisley to the gold. And Melina Anderson, who is the one person that everybody thought might put some heat on her for that, has decided that she's going to settle with the other three. We are set on our own. Just getting her drinking system sorted. And Johnson and Kolowek still together. And I think they could probably picture themselves closing down on Riosa if they work together. Kolowek going out wide. To the right of the portage. Johnson to the left. No stress exits for them, and they both hit towards the grass. Kolowek the first onto the grass section. Johnson shadowing her. Melissa Johnson on her way, just watching her run that portage. Hands in the middle of the handles, and somehow when she's running, that boat is still trimmed back. You're still bouncing the rudder every second or third <coughs> stroke. It's a tough call if you're going to have it trimmed one way, back's better than front, I guess, for running with. But there's the one downside of handles. If you have water in the boat and it yep. goes to one end or the other, you haven't got a lot of leeway to uh, change where you're holding the boat. That's them on the left of the graphic that you can see at the bottom of the screen. That little red, white and green dot on the right undersells the story of the Scud missile that is Van der Kisley that is screaming away at the front of this race. So each, each one of those lines represents one lap. That's one kilometre, two kilometres, three kilometres and the last little bit, three and a bit kilometres. So... Van der Kisley at two kilometres nearly. So 
So nearly one and a half in front of these two. Who at least have each other for company. And somewhere further back, we've got New Zealand and Japan both going solo. So the problem for New Zealand and Japan with a race that's basically now a time trial for Kisley is that the probability is they run the risk of being lapped because True. the top end speed will be high all the time. There's Kisley already round the top turn and that is such a comforting view for her finishing the turn, coming out of the turn and still not overlapping with that chase group of four. That gap growing all the time. I think we expected this to be a hot race. We didn't expect it minute to be this one. Minute 20 maybe, minute and 30, minute and 20, minute and 15. So Kisley relaxed down a bit. And yeah, she has, hasn't she? Pumping water out the boat. One of those bubbly, cheerful characters that just makes friends instinctively. So she's got connections, friends and acquaintances in the paddling world and outside of the paddling world all over the world. Heading into that strangely calm bit of water at the corner before she comes around the reeds into the thick of the headwind. Apart from that look over her left shoulder and that second and third take when she was coming into the portage, she has just settled into this zone. She's been in this bubble and been mechanical and exceptional. Sarah Lockwood. Into the portage, going long. Hands to break the boat. Neatly enough out, and the Kiwi is on her way onto the gross section of the portage. In for a refuel. Neatly done. A juice tastes like the nectar of the gods if you're tired. Or it tastes like the worst thing you've ever tasted and you wonder why you ever chose that flavour. <laughs> that's, the, that's the other option. Really? Did I choose that flavour? Kisley much more mellow on this lap than on the previous one. The damage was done on the previous lap. Manon Hashimoto of Japan. Onto the shoulder as before. We'll get the lap times at some point. But it'd be interesting. That last lap was the fast one, I think, relative to the other group. And now the times will even out just a little. Hashimoto. She's been on her own for a lot of this race. Allowing herself the luxury of a little smile as she soaks up the applause. So she's just starting lap five of seven. And Kisley, somewhere out there, just finishing that same lap. There she is.
the Wonder Express steaming away. No passengers allowed on this one. Compare the urgency of <laughs> that. Yeah, these guy, girls are racing for second now. Trying to decide how best to manage their race yeah. to make the most of their opportunities. It's a complex equation because each of them brings different weapons into that that battle for silver and bronze. I think it's for bronze, to be fair, because Anderson can run that final portage so hard that she's going to get in first and she'll be virtually impossible to catch. So it's between Barrios, Milova and Mackenzie for the one medal, which is the bronze. I think Barrios was fourth last year, so a bronze would be good for her. She'd be happy with that. Wanda Kisley, in addition to being a technically very well-schooled paddler, is tough as a personality. So if there was a nagging thought that would creep into the back of her head saying, this racing away on your own into headwind is tough, the dominant part of Wanda Kisley's personality would say, so what? Get on with it. So she's directly opposite us, 150 meters to the bottom turn can and then she'll be coming into the portage. And again, this time when she comes around the bottom turn can. Nearly two minutes now, the gap. I'm not, not expecting a double take because maybe a double double take, but she might come back for another look and just to give herself that energy shot and the adrenaline rush to know that this is not just a good day at the office, it's just going all according to plan and a whole lot better. So is that 15.29 lap that did the damage? But even this one seemed to be 15.35, was it? I mean, it's only six seconds slower. She looks a lot more relaxed on this one, though. Just one look over the shoulder to confirm what she, I guess, already knew. She knows now. She knows, super comfortable for her now. So Kisley enters the portage and these four girls can see her. They will be looking at her running down that pontoon now. Oh. They'll be looking at her thinking, how the hell did this happen? She looks like happen? she's in another race. And the crowd puts hands together for what is a very, very special performance from Van der Kisley. Head and shoulders above the rest today. So her next target is the Japanese paddler who's about <laughs> 800 meters up the course. On her lap six now, her penultimate lap. It must be so nice getting in after that portage and having the downwind leg. Yeah. And we're in cruise control here, I think. Barely moving in this group by the look of it. Oh, Mackenzie's going up on the right. Maybe she's a bit frustrated with the pace of that bunch. Uh, that's not really going to stick. Round the boys they go. Portage time. Melina Anderson will have first bite at the cherry. 
What do you do if you're Melina Anderson? If you run too hard, you've got no company for the next two laps. I think she's content to sit with this yeah, bunch for another too. two laps. She yeah. knows she's got more guns on the battleship yeah. than the others do for the end sprint. So she's, she's in a happy place. Milova tries to shade her. Pretty good takeout from Mackenzie this time. The half drop of the boat, but she recovers well. Anderson. Milova getting rid of juice and getting fresh ones. Christy McKenzie sees it as an yeah, opportunity and takes very off. Very much so. Let's see if four can become two. I'd like to be part of that. She's going to need a quick put in here. Oh, and on the side it of her is boat. She's on not. the side of her boat. Just rolled away she's from her. She's still there now. And all three go at the same time. I don't think Anderson will be interested in taking off here. She likes paddling on her own. She's, I've heard her say that in a number of interviews. I think it's worth the chase, though. It's good for her. I mean, all she's done is super stress the other three. They're going to have to burn some matches. And ultimately, where she's in right now, she wants to safeguard her silver. And if I think Anderson's gone. This is the pen ultimate lap. There's, there's two of these to go. Chilai Voros has been caught by Egan and Burkett. Ooh. Chilai Voros just catching a toe on the lip of the cockpit as she went into the portage pudding. She could have done with the portage that quick. On the previous lap. Jenny Egan Simmons, one of the athletes who's tasted success as a marathoner and as a sprinter. Okay. Let's have a look at some of that action from a little bit earlier. Anderson coming down to the portage. Mackenzie just behind her. So Mackenzie should be in touch when they leave here. Anderson hops in. Done all the hard work to get gone. here. And there's Mackenzie. Just got a foot on the side of the boat. So she can't sit down. Has to level the boat up. And there's where the gap opens up. Mackenzie actually third to leave. And that gap, I think, will remain for some time. Riosa round the bottom turn on her own. Rebecca Mann coming through for a drink swap. Fresh juice bag safely over her head. Very efficiently executed by her team. Trying to get rid of stuff. <laughs> Whatever stuff was, she clearly didn't want it. She starts the pedal up on lap six. Feel for her. She on the water. She was in the top three on that first lap, and she just hasn't got the running nailed down yet. And if she's going to be up the sharp end in these races, that's something she's going to need to work on over the next year. I can hear you chewing your mini egg, Dave. Leave my mini egg alone. I'm not taking the headset off. <laughs> You're like a hamster in an experiment, Lawley. You're going to have a mini egg within seconds. Have you listened to me crunch mine? <laughs> I'm reaching for the bag as we speak. <laughs> Riosa, in and away. I'm going to resist the temptation of the mini egg You know you now. can't. You know you can't. I've Sitting on my hands. I'll take a 30 second shift while you guys are Riosa away and clear. In front of her, Rebecca Mann. Mackenzie. 
Man looking back over her shoulder, but the gap is big. One and three. It's the South African trying to get back in contact with Anderson. Anderson unfazed by what's going on behind her, I think. She's in territory she likes again. And that gap's got quite a bit bigger since the portage. So we have a scrap for bronze. That's the way it's panning out now on lap six. Melissa Johnson, Maria Kolowek still locked together. Johnson gets a blast of ACDC as she comes into the portage straight. Seems to have done the trick for Kolowek. She's come cantering past. Oof. Oh, and she's got the nose pointing the wrong way. Neatly oh, fixed. Shortage. Fantastic Saturday afternoon crowd here at Lake Else coming down to watch the action. Danes have really gone for this one. Is the small matter of Pedersen M coming up a little bit later in the men's K1 race? And I'm sure a lot of them are fans of the way Mads is performing at the moment. That's not going to be an easy race either, though. There's some big other big names in there who've got a fairly solid opinion about who's going to be winning and who isn't. And Mads has been the poster boy for this event. Um, he's not uncomfortable with that, but it does create the pressure of expectation. And you've seen this before. I mean, in every one of those yep. regions, you tend to put your marathon hero front and centre yep. in the marketing of the event. And... Uh, they're, they're initially very flattered, but it does contribute to the pressure. There's no dodging that. No, and we saw it with um, Romalo in Portugal a few years back. And uh, sadly, it didn't pan out for him that day. Anderson on the left of your screen. And the, the three chasers effectively in the battle for bronze. Now down bottom right. Spare a thought for our ITOs who've been out on the naughty chair raft. Only upgrade is that they've actually got chairs there now. It's not a. Might, they might have bought their own chairs at the market at the week at the weekend. Now I think ever since we branded it the naughty chair raft and there were no chairs on it, there's been a bit of concerted. Maybe somebody's had a GoFundMe account going to put chairs on the naughty chair raft for the the ITOs. They're in the background of the three chases. That's the race for bronze right there. Who are we fancying for bronze there? We've got Milova, Mackenzie and Barrios. Going Mackenzie. Thinking I might be agreeing with you. I, if I had to pick a female paddler to scrap for my life, I think Chrissy Mackenzie would be high on the list. Fast portage, solid run round the last short turn. Yeah, and if it's, if it's tired and you, you, you're digging deep into the reserves of energy and you rely as much on heart as you are on your energy, I would back Christy McKenzie. So 338 metres. Wouldn't be too surprised if that started to shrink slightly. Now Anderson is away. She's 40 metres clear of the three chasers in the bronze battle. That's almost unheard of at World Championship level, that somebody would canter away. She's been at the front and then on her own the entire race. She has scarcely yeah. spent time chilling yeah. on somebody's wave in the old marathon style. It's the mark of a champion.
There are two sides to that argument. One, you've got to admire and heap praise on the quality of the performance. But you would really love to see her being put under serious pressure by somebody that can do the same. Yep. And just stress her to... Well, Anderson can do the same on her day. Not you know, today. She's had a, a season in the sprinting. I think she's done reasonably well at that as well. I'm sure somebody can inform us of how well she has done. But maybe just not done the background work to be able to match Kisley today. But it wasn't the... the yeah, had it not been for that portage, she would be with her. Van der Kisley zoned out. So opposite us, Lockwood in commentary. Behind her somewhere is Hashimoto and hunting both of them down is Van der Kisley. That'll be a fun job for her on the, her last long lap. Just to have a target in front of her that she can see. Lockwood round the turn. start her sixth lap. The predictions are fairly easy for this one, Ivan, one and two, but I'm going to ask you to, at this stage, nail your colours to the mask for bronze. Well, you've, you've gone with Mackenzie. I so have. I'm just by the way, maybe we can just get our, our commentator cam on here, because the... Um, the weapon of punishment was the hammer of Thor yep. for the morning session. We have, we have substantially upgraded here. You're asking me to put the curse of doom onto some poor paddler who's on the water, but I'm, I'm going to go with Barrios. Barrios. For my second, so the finger of fate has third, fallen on poor Maria place. Barrios. I think coming into the wind, finish is strong. Hectic last pull. This we borrowed from the Viking village just up the road. It's a comp oxer. This is the weapon that's going to administer punishment to you if you get your prediction wrong. I think and things, I'll are, things are turning from bad to worse in here. You survived the hammer think, of Thor. I just don't think. I think you need therapy. There's a you've got aggressive tendencies. On behalf of all you the need, paddlers, I'm trying to correct your predictions. There are people you can talk this through with, Dave. <laughs> You just need to ask for help. The first problem to overcome, the first part of overcoming a problem like you've got is to ask for help. Every home should have a comp oxy. This is the thing you need. Every time you've wanted to reach over somebody's shield and chop their head open, you've got to have... This is beautiful. And I'm, having made the prediction, I'm going to hold you to that on okay. your sore finger. Right. We're, it's a deal. So Kisley opposite us as Lockwood comes out of her portage and here running up the pontoon well not running quite just yet still emptying out is Hashimoto of Japan and she's going to be caught on this next lap for sure yeah Meanwhile, Van der Kisley is halfway around the bottom turn, Ken. And at this stage... We need to root for Hashimoto, see if she can get back on this lap before Kisley can catch her, but it's looking a little bit unlikely. So Kisley's got one full lap to do after this. And then the short lap. So here she comes. Kisley enters the portage as Hashimoto leaves. That's about a 30 second difference. Little leg stretch. She'll enjoy it. She'll appreciate that. It's been a. And it's a different game now all of a sudden. No crowd around you. K 
cavernous lead in the bank. An appreciative crowd baying in your ears. Body's feeling good. I think she won't give herself the luxury of a smile and a Not wave until the next portage. All. I think we will see it on the next portage. And if we don't, be disappointed, to be fair, Dave. I think she's earned it. I think she's earned a little bit of a moment in front of the crowd. She can see Hashimoto now about less than a minute in front of her. I wonder if part of her team isn't at the portage put in because there was somebody that she popped an eye up to. Not cheerful conversation. It was very purposeful. Curtain military in style, but... And there's Anderson on the other side of the course. Pulling away gradually from the three chasers behind her, which is Mackenzie, Milova and Barrios. Yeah, unless she makes an unthinkable mistake in one of these two portages, this situation is not going to change. I think even if she makes two unthinkable mistakes, she's still going to be okay. cool cloud formation on that shot from the portage Anderson out on the right for those Me. watching see how she just leaves her foot in the boat when she gets out so the boat doesn't drift away from the side of the pontoon just dangles a trailing foot into the boat and that keeps the boat against the side of the pontoon Oh, it's a good take out from Mackenzie. Christy goes to the front. Milliver's with her. Barrios struggling on the running. It's not looking so good for my prediction on the final portage. Mackenzie looking like she's got bronze written all over her at the moment. Really aggressive run this from Christy Mackenzie. Let's see if she can get away clean. Christy McKenzie cautiously getting that left foot in the center of the boat. Milliver is going to be taking off with her. That's the scrap for bronze. Anderson well clear now, comfortably clear in second. Nikki Burkett pulling the bunch as they come around the bottom turn can. Jalai Voros and Jen Egan Simmons. Voros going left. Pink to the right, white to the left. It's standard rules. Nick Burkett nice and quickly out of the boat. Married to the current doozy champion, and you don't become a doozy champion without being a great portager. So the Burkett household has spent its time running with a boat. Mum of two delightful kids. Egan running well to keep up with these two. Nick Burkett is into the boat quickly and on her way. A little no. bit shallow there for Egan. Just got a rudder stuck. And there's my prediction. The axe didn't work for Barrios. She's out of the running for bronze. <laughs> so which finger do you sacrifice? Can yeah. you choose one? Sorry about that. I'm a benevolent dictator. You can okay. choose which finger you're going to sacrifice to the axe. I thought she had it. Not too late? Too late. So it's Mackenzie and Milova one-on-one for the bronze medal. 
And that's the news. Man on Hashimoto has been caught by Van der Kisley. And she'll be chucking in her short lap before there's confirmation on screen as well. And now in her sights, Kisley has Lockwood of New Zealand. Way more fun to set up targets to pick off than just paddling into this open expanse of water in front of you. Wanda putting her paddles down for a second. Possibly just a adjust adjusting her juice system. Imagine by now the fatigue is starting to show and feel in those shoulders of Kisley. She's got a very systematic, analytical way of analysing how her body is performing in, in sport. And I guess that is an essential asset at this stage in the race, to avoid the mushroom cloud. Pretty much stop pulling away from Anderson now. Anderson might actually be travelling slightly faster. I think the gap was two minutes at one stage. Now it's 1.52. And that's because it's physically impossible now for that gap to be closed. Kisley knows that and the pressure is off to keep grinding, grinding, grinding. It is literally just a journey home now for Kisley. Unfortunately, it's a journey home against the wind. Yeah. It doesn't simplify things. Only company she's got there are those white ducks. Riosa running through comfortably enough away in the portage on to her last final lap and that's the top turn can so all the athletes on their final lap Van der Kisley on her way back, she'll be in for the last portage and then a short lap in what should be a victory march down to the finish line here at Lake Yells. Right, Lockwood might not be on her final lap. She has to be caught to be <laughs> on her final lap. Do you want to get caught? So, There's uh, some pride I don't know. Here. I, I don't know how I'd feel personally. I, I, I think personally I'd want to get caught at this stage. I'm done. It's a long lap on your own at the end. On a choppy, windy afternoon. Yeah. It's, if it was a... Yeah. A balmy afternoon for a pedal, perhaps not. <coughs> I think Lockwood will be caught. Before they get back to the portage, it's a long leg back against that wind. So it's a minute 44 according to the latest splits. So or translate. Definitely closing down on Kisley. That's because Kisley's foot's off the pedal. Anderson had a couple of slow laps with the group of four and is fresher than Kisley now. But day late and a dollar short for making any impact on the result. Johnson and Kolowek coming in for their final long lap. Kolowek going all the way down to the end of the pontoon. Just about. And she's also paddling one of those compartmentalized boats. Is she? I don't think so. Do they... I think you're making from a up. from a construction point of view, do they? I mean, you you rejig your construction plans to keep it inside the weight limit because you are adding more construction material to the boat. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess the boat people who've been weighing the boats would know if they're heavier or not. Make the decks a little lighter to make up for it. Or it's normally a challenge to make the boats up to the minimum limit. Kisley and Hashimoto. The 
metronomic wonder kisley she won by just over a second last year from the same opponent but she did win the europeans by over three minutes earlier this year as well so familiar territory for kisley almost 350 meters the distance at the moment and there's Lockwood about to have a final lap erased see how Kisley's staying closer to the edge stay out the wind just a little behind those reeds it's a great shot it gives you a perspective of just how the wind affects the water differently depending on where you are But now she's out in the exposed water. Never heard a paddler say they enjoy paddling into a headwind, ever. And there you go, Lockwood has been lapped. Even but if it one makes one small lap for her, left to go. One small lap left for Kisley. I don't think we've seen a chink of weakness or fatigue from Van der Kisley today. We're close on two hours into this race. Yeah. She's really poker-faced when she races anyhow, so it's very hard to get a read on what is going on. which is curious from such a bubbly yeah. personality. If I was Sarah Lockwood there, I would have moved over and at least sat with her for as long as I could. Just to get the picture. Just, just exactly that. <laughs> Why not? You've got, the, you got it on, on screen. You get some sort of appreciation of what that speed is and what it feels like. And hell yes, you're paddling with one of the greats. Grab the opportunity. Melina Anderson. Last check, 346 meters behind. Kisley staying close to the bank. Uh, gap staying about the same between Kisley and Anderson, just under the two minutes. just been treated by the uh, hierarchy here as children <laughs> and, and told about the lapped athletes but we're on it this time it was only yesterday when we weren't on it today <laughs> no, we're, we're new we're born again today aren't we Dave no, the, the we're, in it. we're on this There's your race for bronze, and that's probably where the real interest is in this race now. Christie's looking strong. Kisley just trying to work out. Oh, she's right opposite us nearly on the course. So she is really very nearly there now. So there's been some display I mean, frankly, it's not always the most exciting to have somebody this far ahead, but it is an impressive display of what is possible. And you have to appreciate the performance rather than the event at this stage. That is some performance. It's been breathtaking. 
It's been hard not to be totally overwhelmed by... two middle laps, lap three and four, where the damage was done. And that there's two super impressive laps. Kisley coming down to the bottom turn on her last long lap. She will do her last portage and then canter up 500 meters to the turn cans and 500 meters back to what will be a world title and a gold medal for Hungary. Job well done. Lapping on this lap a full minute slower than she was early on. But it was that lap three and four where she was making the run for it. Two laps at the same speed as they did their first lap. And that is some going. Into the portage she comes. And this is not a contest, this portage. I'm, this think, I'm thinking a smile and a wave. This is a victory parade. This is one of the greats of the game doing what she does best. And she is arguably in the prime of her career. It has been magnificent from start to finish. She powered away from the start line and had everybody scrambling to stay with her. And she has hardly ever relinquished the front of that race. There was a brief moment when yeah, she sat on the, the wave. Smile. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a wave. Give us a Go, wave. Go, you good thing, Vanda. A stop and a wave would be great. But she's still focused on the job in hand. One small lap. It's just been such a professional and polished performance. Can you think of a mistake or hiccup anywhere? Not for In the her. last two hours? I well, can't. There's no reason to. She's been on her own and she's just... He questioned, I questioned early on whether she should put, be putting in so much work with Anderson in the V-Wash. Here comes Lockwood. She's going to be second across the line, I think. <laughs> Maybe not, because Anderson's only just behind her. But Lockwood could claim bronze as she comes across the line with a fist pump and a wave. To probably get her into heaps of trouble, yeah. but I would do the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anderson comes around the bottom turn, Cairns has a look over her shoulder to see if she's possibly being hunted down. The answer to that is negative, Ghost Rider. So she can then set her sights on the portage and consolidating the silver medal for Sweden. So Lockwood just getting in her boat now. I think she can hold Anderson off for the short lap. Beautifully out, such a drill technique. And she comes home, fittingly, to an ovation of applause. Cream of Sweden's marathon paddling woman. She won gold in the short course. It's going to be silver in the long course. It's a good weekend's work. So Anderson is away without any hiccups. Now the race and Mackenzie has taken off. It's She's done, got a it? sniff of bronze. This looks so good for the South African. Milova is flailing in the distance behind her. Mackenzie's gone. It's a kilometer from here. She backs herself, so she's taken off like a scalded cat. In, it was a bit of a wobble put in last time. This is neat. She is off. Milova has got it all to do if she fancies any hardware at all from this outing, but it's going to have to be something special. Yeah, no one's closing that down. That's about six lengths. And even if she does close it down, there's an awful lot of work to do to get past. In the background, Barrios runs down the pontoon with Hashimoto. Christy McKenzie. It's probably 20 meters clear. She's got Anderson in front of her. She's not going to catch her, but she can use her as motivation and bait to keep the pace up. But there is your world champion. Tired now. 
but the journey home is a simple one. Spot on about I'm looking up the course and I'm not seeing Sarah Lockwood going round that short <laughs> turn. I think they've stopped her now and told her she has to go round. Hashimoto, Hashimoto gets in her boat a tired for the pudding, final it time. Must be said. And here she comes down the finish straight. Hungary's Vanda Kisli. Bit between her teeth, right off the start line. She's tired. She's done her thing. And for the first time, she's focusing outside of her bubble. She's had her eyes focused over the front of her boat the entire race. A woman on a mission. And as you pointed out, Ivan, she afforded the luxury of just sticking her head out of that bubble as she came through that final portage. Soak up and get some pleasure out of this because it has been an almost military execution of a task that she had set herself. She did most of this entirely on her own. Part of it pulling the bunch, a very small portion of it sitting right. on the weight, but virtually all of it racing alone at the front. Kisley across the line now. And that was pretty impressive. Pretty impressive indeed. That bubbly charm now comes oozing out. Yeah, that's got champion written all over it. Brilliant performance. So confident when she made that break to get away. She had that one look back, saw Melina Anderson, was not within striking distance and pressed on. And that gap was never closed. It was shrunk temporarily down to about 20 seconds and then it just expanded. Now at roughly two minutes. Melina Anderson next across the line. Mackenzie on her own in third. And she's got enough gas in the tank to keep that stroke oh, rate easy. high. She's got a sniff of bronze. It'll mean the world to her, I can tell you that. Anderson consolidating that silver for Sweden. And there's a reverse view which amplifies what actually exaggerates the lead that Mackenzie has. But Mackenzie does have a substantial lead over Milova. So she's got 75 meters to go to the line. Your short course champ. And one of the benchmarks of the game globally, Sweden's finest. She's got to come down to claim silver for Sweden. It's hard to read the emotion behind those dark shades. But down to the line comes Melina Anderson, second place in the senior women's K1. Great race from her. She'll regret that one portage, just one portage that let. And Kiss here's me the race for bronze. And down to the line in the green K1 comes Christy McKenzie for South Africa. That is one very happy paddler there. She will be, in her words, stoked. Milova next across the line. That's Lockwood above her at lap minus one. So she gets the beat, but you um, put a little asterisk next to that. It's still nice to finish with all the big names on the water right with you, though. Yeah. Milova, Anderson, McKenzie rafting up to exchange some banter. They've slugged it out. I think they're going to check what each one's got. Big in hug lunchbox. from Milova to. Uh, <laughs> See, what's, what, what, did you, what did you have in yours? Nice chocolate yo yo biscuit, something like that. Big beam all over the they face of Christy McKenzie. They're getting blown back across the line. <laughs> They'll be in a world of trouble if they get blown back across that line. <laughs> Off the course they go. McKinsley, what an amazing race. Thank you.
I never seen something like it on a world championship since the golden days of Renate Che. Yeah. <laughs> It was absolutely fantastic, and the first portage was um, uh, decisive. What did you think there? What was uh, Yeah, so I didn't know what happened at the first portage, but I was at the front, and I was thinking just run and pedal as hard as I can. And the, the other portage, I had uh, the whole world is cheering for me, so thank you so much for you guys. Vanda Kisli. You had almost the same race plan or the same development in the Europeans, uh, moving ahead uh, immediately. Is that uh, how you are thinking or planning your races in the future as well? I didn't plan that uh, because Melina is here and uh, she is the strongest, I think and the other girls as well, uh, very strong. So I, I plan just um, to stay there at the, at the wash with, with them and uh, pedal as far as I can with them. And uh, at the finish, we see what happened. But I can broke away, so I'm very happy. Yeah, you could, really could. Congratulations once again, uh, the great Vanda Kisli. So Stefan having a few words with our champion. Talking of champions in shot there, center of your screen, <laughs> big man himself, Denmark's finest, Mads Pedersen just under the Danish flag on the pole. But paddling away from us with his back to him, one of his nemesis opponents, Andy Burkett from South Africa. Such a healthy respect between these two. It's interesting how often they come off the water saying, win or lose, the best thing about the day was the racing was fair. Just circling back to Wanda Kisley and her race plan. Not really expecting to be on her own for most of the day and content for a fight and possibly an end sprint and... I think if, if she'd stood there and said, yeah, I always plan to break away at the second portage and, and win the race by two minutes, she'd be lying. Because you cannot expect to do something like that to an athlete of Melinda, Melina Anderson's quality. So she's dead right. She thought that would come down to the last bit. Rebecca Mann coming down to the line to wrap up her race. The colours of Australia. Aussie Women's Marathon champion gets a beep from the uh, automated system here that officially ends her race. She was impressive early on. I really appreciated what she did. She was strong in the group, clever in the group, and if you've got both those qualities. All you have to work on is your weak points. And, you know, that, frankly, was her portage in. She's just not very quick over land. And that's a job that, if she wants to improve, I'm sure she will look at. She doesn't need me to tell her. Stefan is with the other two women. Let's catch up with them. So, uh, silver and bronze medalist, Melina Anderson and Christy McKinsey. Uh, how was the race for you, Melina? Uh, for me, it was really tough from the start. Uh, I felt I was like going well the first two laps, but then in the first portage, I was way off, so my tactics weren't perfect. And then I had to chase the group, so I was really tired. What, what happened in the decisive first portage? Was the split already there? Yeah, I think I was like a little bit too shy coming into the portage. I should have pushed a little bit more. Um, and maybe taking the left side instead of the right. 
You uh, told me yesterday that you were a little bit unsure if uh, your 500 meter training would pan out uh, negatively for you uh, today, but it seems that you still have the strength for lo long, long distance races, doing a lot of job. Um, I think, yeah, the training is working, but for if I want to keep up with Vanda, I think I really need to train some more marathon. Congratulations, Melina. Beautiful race. Amazing. Thank you. Melina Andersson. Christy McKenzie, what a wonderful race for you. Yeah, it was uh, really good. Um, the wind was a little bit stronger than I was anticipating. Um, but yeah, everyone's got to deal with the same circumstances, I guess. I uh, had a relatively good start. And I think for the first half of the race, I just tried to conserve as much energy as I could. Um, try to play the long game. And it yeah, worked for the most part. <laughs> yeah, we were watching uh, the speed uh, during the race. You were one of the fastest during the uh, final laps. Is that your strength? Um, not usually. <laughs> uh, I think, um, yeah, when we when Vanda got away, I kind of knew that getting back to her would be really difficult. Um, but we managed to get back onto Melina's wave, and I thought that if there was anyone that could pull us back there, it would be her. Um, but Vanda was just too strong for us today. Um, but yeah, just kind of managed to stick with the bunch. Um, Melina's portaging was just a bit too good for me. I couldn't stick with her on the on the one that she got away. Um, but yeah, just like I said, conserved as much energy as possible. I could see the other two girls that were with me were getting tired towards the end. Um, so yeah, just tried to push on the last lap as much as possible. Congratulations once again. A more, uh, fantastic performance. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. Hello, oh, Stefan, chatting to the silver and bronze placed women. Christy McKenzie, delighted to be on the podium with two of the giants of the women's marathon game, women's paddling game. Melissa Johnson just holding off. Kolowek of Argentina. Christy did allude in her interview to just how strong the wind is out there. Yeah. I don't think we honestly appreciate it, either from the on-screen camera or from sitting on the side. We can see it in the reeds being buffeted around, but certainly once you've turned that corner and you're coming back towards the start-finish straight, I think it's substantial. For her to mention it, it has to be. Yeah. And... Uh, and as these the good, one of the good things with this lake is that it doesn't seem to pick up the waves too much. Just looking Nobody's at complaining about sinking or. Yeah. Just looking at these ducks being blown past us at 10 k's an hour. They're, you an they're swimming, Dave. They're not swimming. They're swimming. You can see their legs moving. No, you can't. I can. Under the water. It's a duck being blown by the wind. <laughs> He's on a downwind. That one's being blown upwind. There, it's a duck downwind. And they're doing 10 k's. <laughs> Before you pull up my socks on what breed of duck it is. It's probably a mallard or something. Uh, you only know that because I told you this morning. Never heard of a mallard. What do you mean you've never heard of a mallard? <laughs> That's a standard duck. <laughs> All right. No rest for the wicked, Ivan. We are going seamlessly from that women's K1 race into the eagerly awaited men's K1. Bring the results up soon. While we watch the men. I think we we got up. the result we were expecting, but not in the way we were expecting. That women's K1 race. I think you'd have only got a fifty percent odds on Kisley winning that before the race. The other fifty would have gone on Anderson. I think it's a. I don't think you could have told the two apart before the race. Only halfway through did you realise that? Well, not halfway through third of the way through, did you realise?
Welcome back. If you have just joined us, welcome back to Lakjels in this uh, gorgeous area of Denmark. Late on Saturday afternoon, as we gear up for one of the blue ribbon events of the uh, Champs every year, it's the men's K1. Hungary gained one medal on Spain in that last event, and it was a gold medal to Van der Kisly. No real changes in the table. Silver to Sweden brings them up to two. Both of their medals come from Melina Andersen. So the wind, uh, a factor in this late afternoon here in Denmark, as we have a look at what is about to play out in front of us. This is the senior men's K1 showdown. Andy Burkett, having won it last year, comes into it as the world champion. He's also the world games champion. And that's the uh, craft that they're allowed to use in terms of ice. And when we have a look at who's going to be on the start line, you'll see this is jam-packed with some of the best in the game. And uh, it's a mouth-watering prospect as they go toe-to-toe -to -toe over the eight laps with seven portages that make up the 27.5 Ks of today's Ronan race. Ronan Foley there in shot with the glasses, fresh off his win yesterday. Talk us through the lap. This is what we've got lined up for the uh, next two and a bit hours. From the start line, up round the top turn and back to the start line. That's lap one. No portages on that. After lap on lap two, a portage on every lap. Where you meet Vikings. Subsequent laps where you meet Vikings and all sorts of things when you least expect them. On the portage. <laughs> just for all the training you've done. <laughs> there's a the Viking, Vikings have been and great. Here we so go. This is our second lap, I think, now. Okay, <laughs> There's a, that was the first lap. All subsequent laps have a portage. And then final short lap over the portage, round the top boys and finish there, just in front of the turn. So we are looking at eight laps, seven portages and the one small lap. And there's everything to play for. We've got a lot of big names in here. We've got the first four from last year's World Championships. Who have we got in shot there? James Russell from Great Britain. Silly. Start list just about right. to come up. This is like the who's who Sinad of South Africa. Sonad from Hungary, he'll be there. Ronan Foley, fresh off his victory yesterday in the under-23s. Prada from Spain, the Spanish have been good all week. Pelly from Hungary. Mori from Japan. Pavlik from Czech. James Russell from Great Britain, who did a great job on the short course. Two other people that I didn't catch. <laughs> Newlands from New Zealand. Paufler from Germany, bit of hit hot and cold. Romalo, Burkitt, Pedersen, Lovemore. They're the big four in the centre of the lane draws. Over uh, involved next to them, then Dan Cox, Faria can be there in the early stages. Alonso, race management expert in 464. Jenny S from France, Kipping from Australia, who's looking strong. Gary Cochia from Argentina, then Giocos from Japan, and Vidal from Denmark. You've probably got a list of 10 that you could pick medals from. It's an unbelievably stacked field. It's going to be a hell of a first two laps, that's for sure. And jammed in the centre of the field, Jose Ramalho, Andy Burkett, Mats Pedersen, and the under-23 champion from last year, Hamish Lovemore. I've been fall right next to them, all stacked together in the centre of the field. It's going to be intense off the start. Lovemore had a great race in the seniors as well last year. He came sixth in the end, but he showed better than that halfway through. He did some good, solid work and catch-ups. Very impressive from Lovemore last year. Bottom of your screen, Denmark's Vidal. Playing second fiddle to Pedersen. Can't be an easy job in your team. Still people are way back off the line. It looks like a Vold. Kipping in the mint green boat from Oz there. And away they go. Vold the first to show on the very first stroke. He got away well. James Russell. 
intent on getting to the front group. It's All four boats fast. in the center have got away together. Romaglio, Burkett, Pedersen. Vold still leads with that colorful nose boat. Going across to them is Kippen in the lime green, not lime green, mint green. He's going to make it to the side of Vold. He's been looking good all week. And Pedersen now takes Mads it on. Mads Pedersen goes straight to the front. Romalo in the cap tries to go around Burkitt. Burkitt is not having any of that. And the other, Dan Johan Vedel, is desperate to try and reconnect with his countrymen at the front by taking a shot. Burkitt shop. taking out, going round to Romalo. That's not helpful to anyone. Romalo still pressing on. Has he given up the chase yet? Yes, Burkitt settles for the V. I know it could have settled for that sooner. Russell just at the back of that group. So Vold, we've got um, Kippin in the green. Alonso in the black boat with a red tip just in front of him. Jokos at the back of that group. Pelly in the yellow boat, top of screen. Pedersen from Romalo, from Vold, from Pelly. You get some idea of how fast they're traveling by how far back those boats sit on the wave. Russell tucked in the back of that group. Great start from Kippin. Burkett tucked in the V and reads me well protected. Got France in there as well. Genius, I think. Faria from Portugal, second right. Foley on the left, hoping to make some impact at the front of the group. And I think he might be taking the lead, Foley. There's a group kind of migrating over towards Ronan Foley, but he's slowed down now. And it could be Romalo has been squeezed to the front. Great job from Foley. Start mixing it closer to the front. On the left is Hungary's Sellier with a kind of headband on. Everything to play for still in that group. So trying to get a. It still looks like Pedersen, Romalo, Alonso to the right of Pedersen, Foley to the left of Romalo. I oh know it's Vold, sorry, to the right of Pedersen. Outside him, Kippin. Outside him, Alonso. Faria just behind Alonso. Behind Pedersen is Burkett. Behind Burkett, James Russell from Great Britain. To his right, South Africa. Lovemore in wearing 363 three on his back. France, Genies also up there. A massive group, and it seems that Pedersen more than happy to do his share up there. Kippin still there in the mint green. Genies in the red boat. Romalo in the backwards cap. Selier, Hungarian in the white boat. Peli, the Hungarian in the yellow boat. To his left, Spain 2, that's Prada from Spain. Burkett having a lovely, easy ride round so far.
group getting strung out just a little. This tells you how fast they're going. I think right at the back of that group is Palfla. Jokos from Japan. Pavlik from Czech. They might be. Look at that. Fantastic group. There's still a few gaps there to be filled in. Like puzzle pieces. The guys just catching up will fill in the empty holes at the back of that group. So Selye, Kippin, Pedersen, Romalo, Russell, Garakachea. Jokos, Faria. There's more in there than that. I missed a few. Bold in there too. That's some group to get round a turn. It will thin out, obviously. Whether it reforms the other side, we're yet to find out. This view would be brilliant if we get this all the way round the turn. It's going to be very, very tight. Everyone's safe so far. A bit of coming together at the back of the group now, but it's all smoothing round. Somebody just backed, hit that boy, it bounced to the left. They're backing up now to go round the boy. You're better off taking your 15 second penalty. At least you're with the group. That's 15 second penalty anyway, and now you're not with the group. So you're going to lose time. I think that's Palfla. And now it kicks off at the front. People running for whoever they think is going to be the leader. Burkitt covering Romalo, but it's going to be Vold, and it's the blue boat that got the best of that, I think, I'm trying to tell you who that is, I can't quite see from here, it's the Argentinian, got a nice, there he is, right up the front. James Russell trying to force into a wave that he knows is only there temporarily till one of those boats fall back, but it's still worth it while. On the far side goes Kippin. Russell, it's falling well for him. So it's Alonso, Kippin, and Vold all fighting it out. Pedersen goes hard now. Romalo forcing to go in hard. It's a four boat race. Kippin falls back. They're going for Alonso. Alonso trying to get to Pedersen. Romalo cuts Pedersen into the V. He'll fall back onto the Norwegian. Romalo's still not happy. I thought he would go to Alonso. He hasn't. And it's going to be a fight between Pedersen and Burkitt. Pedersen takes that one. Burkitt moves over. Or maybe, is it Burkitt? Maybe not. No, I think it was Lovemore who had to move over for Pedersen. Burkitt's on the side of Romalo. Faria, the second Portuguese. That was quite stressful. A four-boat challenge for the front is never comfortable. Pedersen not having it all his own way so far. Romalo looking good at the moment. So calling names for the... Ooh! Kippin and Selye. A bit of a coming together there. They both recovered. And again, Kippin trying to come across the front of Selye. It's going to be dangerous. Ooh! Thanks to Selye backing off. Kippin survived that. More action at the front. Two South Africans move to the front now. Romalo holds them off. Pedersen tucked in the V. Alonso to the right of Romalo. And it could be Burkitt leading. Pedersen retires to the V. Round comes Foley. Takes Lovemore into the V. Pedersen will have to move back on two. 
Can't see who he's moving on to. Looks like Vold there. Around the outside comes Selye in the white boat. Vold fiddling with his drinks maybe. Paddles down for a second. And it's Burkitt. Foley done a great job to be there through all of that action. Alonso looking super cool on the outside. It's not Solier on the outside, it's Faria of Portugal. Back comes James Russell. There's still spaces in that group. Tuck in to the left of that far side. That is Faria. I've been calling him Selye for a bit. Oh, James Russell unlucky just to lose, lose out to uh, the Argentinian. It kicks off at the front again with Romalo stretching it out now. Burkitt not allowing him past until he feels safe enough to drop back. Foley ahead. And Romalo squeezes across to Foley. Burkitt drops into the V. Lovemore on the left of Foley. Faria still stuck on the outside. Doesn't seem particularly happy there, but he's run out of options for now. France at the back of the group. Falling back is Pelly, the closest to us in the black and yellow boat. Foley leading and leading well. I think it's Pele, Pele and Selye, the two Hungarians this side of the group. Genies in the red boat, trying to change his position, not sure where to. It doesn't seem to be anywhere to go from where he was. Just to change. He was behind Pedersen, which seems like a better option. He's going back there now. Through the reeds goes Faria. And the next set. Foley leads. Foley, Lovemore, Romalo, Burkitt, Alonso, Pelly, Pedersen, uh, Vidal. They come round the bottom turn for the first time. And that last churn of speed really hurt the group with Russell and Kippin. They're back about 50 metres now. Foley round the turn and pushing on. Pelly struggling. On the outside, Faria struggling also. And at the back of the group, Genies may not make it back from this. So Foley really stretching this group out. He feels like he's done his turn. And who's going to take it on? It's South Africa with Lovemore. And it's well worth pressing on now. Foley feeling uncomfortable letting Romalo round his outside. He wants to stay on that front wash. Not convinced the V is safe yet. So Foley presses on, just needs the group to settle before he'll fall back to the V. Somebody needs, and there it goes, it's going to be Burkitt. Oh, he's just, no, Burkitt's got a bunch of weed on the front of his boat, just an acceleration and a boat, a boat bounce to get that weed off. There goes Lovemore, now Foley feels safe to drop back onto Pedersen. Group settled. Pedersen round the outside.
Alonso pressing up. Romalo holds him off until it's safe to drop back. Now it's safe to drop back and he can sit on the side of Alonso. There's your chasers out to the left. Here's Josh Kippin. I think Pedersen has just put in a big effort just as we left them. Going round the outside of the group. Off he goes. Just enough to get back into the front. Faria off the back of the group for now. Pelly out to the left. Genies of France, I think, out of contention. They so move away Ladies from us. Ladies and gentlemen, us. we now turn our attention to the medal ceremony for the. And we're going to leave you, women. I think, for a medal ceremony, and we'll see what it looks like when we get back. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the medalists in the K1 women. These medals will be presented by Frank Schmidt Hansen, the mayor of the city of Vian, and he will be accompanied by Andras Faludi from the Hungarian team. The bronze medal representing South Africa, Christy McKenzie. The silver medal representing Sweden, Melina Anderson. And the gold medal and the world champion Representing Hungary, Vanda Kisli. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Hungary. Thank you. 
Congratulations to the three medalists. We return our attention now to the men's K1. So let's see if there have been any major developments while the presentation went on. We'll get you back up to the men's K1 as soon as we can. Just as we left, Pedersen pressed on up the outside of the group. Those four gents on the left of the podium providing post-presentation music are playing a thing that looks a bit like a car clutch plate, but it's called a lure. And it's actually a fantastic Viking stamp on them. Right, let's take stock of where we are now that we have finished handing medals to the senior women. Here we come, I think just coming around the corner, you can see the paddle splashes. That doesn't look like the front group to me. The front group must be appearing. This looks more like it, that's Pelly from Hungary, Garakachea. Love more Romalo. Romalo leading by the look of it with Burkett behind him. Alonso to his right. Sellier behind Garakachea. Fold behind Love more. Pedersen tucked in in the lead V behind Romalo. He's having a rest and Foley just behind him. Right hand side of your group from Spain there. Also is Prada. He's on the far right. Just wondering if we've lost anyone from this group that was there last time we saw them. Eleven in that group. And the chase group. Not sure who's out to the right hand side there. That could be Selye, the Hungarian. If it is, it's an ambitious move. And it's an ambitious move it's to get right back to the front of that bunch. It'll just wait for him to get close and then squeeze. speed up. You watch Love more now, it'll just say no. no Whoa, pedals down. Love Contact across no. the chest of Lovemore. Nicely handled by Lovemore. Lovemore should have gone a bit earlier, really. It was a dangerous move. Contact like that can end badly sometimes. And Foley off the back of the group there now. Just struggling a little bit for speed. Celia having another pop at it. Same method again. Lovemore either didn't see him soon enough or didn't take him seriously enough. And it ended up with a contact that was potentially unnecessary. That's the bow of Selye's boat, so he hasn't made it back again. Andy Burke but He's Chavik having a go. The Argentinian Garakachea having a go on the outside. Selye holds him off. Selye now ahead of Lovemore. Lovemore gets squeezed back onto the V. Burkett moves round to the side and tries. The Africans Ooh. are a bit too happy to have contact, I think, in this one so far. Burkett was going for a gap that was never going to be there. There's no way Garakachea in the blue boat 
was going to let him between him and Sellier. That's just a bit too ambitious, I think. And we're breaking it down now to nine boats. It's Pelly and Foley who are off the back. Pelly's still in contact though. There's the bow of Foley's boat. Romalo, comfortable. Alonso just seems to get better and better, Alonso, at managing these races. Very rarely gets caught in the scraps. Vedel on the far side, maybe the surprise in the group to anyone who isn't Danish. Presumably the Danes know him a bit better than we do. But he does look like he's working hard. Romalo looking good. Foley, solid effort at the back there. There's a space behind Burkitt that looks like the best space if you can get back to it but they're coming close to the portage and if Foley arrives in debt it's going to be a tough run for him Foley going up the side there isn't anything there left of Vold looks a better option Now he comes to the left of Vold. He's coming up behind the tail of Burkitt. It's going to fall well for him because Pelly's dropped back to the tail of Garakachea. And that's a nice move from Foley. It was an expensive move. Should have gone there first time. But here we come. We're at that bottom turn and it's all going to kick off now. We know how well drilled Pedersen is. Romalo also good though. Sellier on his left. Alonso rarely has a bad one. Vedel on the outside. First three coming left. Pedersen goes long on the right. Beautifully out from Romalo, Alonso. No real problems for anyone. Just a bit slow at the back. Alonso. Romalo. Sellier. And Pedersen. I can't believe they splashed our camera. Away goes Alonso. We haven't seen Alonso make a run for it for a long, long time. This is a new Alonso. Pedersen on his outside. Still a long way back to him. Romalo with him. We haven't seen that level of intent from Ivan Alonso. For a few years now, the South Africans trying to pick up the pieces at the back there. Vold also back there. Burkitt is going to be the one who closes. Can't believe they splashed our camera at the portage there. Oh, that's James Russell. Looks like he took a swim, ended up on the landing stage. Bleak for James Russell. We missed it. Maybe there's a camera that had that. But the two groups very much separate up there. The South Africans in the both in the group to the left. Jokos runs through the portage on his own. It's a big difference between this race and the Masters race that he won earlier in the week. We're looking at a slightly different class. I don't know if we could see that portage where Russell must, something must have happened to Russell to end up. And there's 
This is a three very happy campers here because they all know each other. They've all worked with each other before and Pedersen is on a roll. This could be down to three and the South Africans are going to have to work very well together to close this down. I haven't seen Alonso do that for a long, long time. Pedersen hands over. Alonso goes again. Romalo, happy just to follow. The group to their left contains both South Africans, I think, and the Hungarian, Selye. We're looking at Sam Newlands there, coming through. And along with Sam Newlands is Jacob Chain from Canada. There's the picture at the front. Looks like Burkett has closed down on that group. Joined the front four, maybe with Sellier. Lovemore, I think, is the South African at the back of the chase group of three. And he looks like he's having a tough time staying with that group, let alone making it back to the front group. So front group of five. Yep. Lap three at this stage as the field heads to the top no, that's okay. of Lac Gels. Japan's Masaki Mori coming through the portage. Three boats at the front of the race if you have just joined us on the live stream. Mats Pedersen, Jose Romalo and Ivan Alonso from an initial break of 10 and 11. Oh, here we go. Yes, from now. From there. That's good. Okay, we're just going to have a replay of what happened in that second group to James Russell from Great Britain. Here he is looking pretty assured there. We might not see him get on the water. It's unlucky. We tried to get a, vu a view of that and just missed it. So no problem. We'll take you back to the front of the race, which is reforming slowly. That front group... We we gave it our best shot to get you a replay. So apologies for the break in communication. So Pedersen, Alonso, Romalo, they nearly made it. Burkett and Lovemore instrumental in bridging back. I don't think Lovemore's there. Burkett is right at the front of that. He, yeah, you're right. Hamish is off. He 
He's at the back of that next group of four. Significant moves in that group. I think that group of four will get back, but there's high cost to what's just happened. So maybe Alonso leading. Oh, it's all change. Group of four chasing on the outside. Effectively cutting the corner. So Burkett, I think, is leading. Yeah, having just bridged onto that gap, he's been pushed. He's pushed his way right to the front. He's probably some more motivated than others in this group to stop the chase for. You see Vold looking over his shoulder there. He's just interested. And now somebody has decided, it's Romalo, has decided he doesn't really want this to happen. He pushes on. Only to the side of the Dane, Johan Vedel. In fact, it's probably Johan Vedel who feels the most vulnerable to that chase four. Everyone else in this group we're accustomed to seeing there. Pelly in the black and yellow boat. Off the back still. On the right. Lovemore just clinging on to Garakachea in the blue boat. And in the white boat is Foley leading that chase. It's a great chase back from Foley. That is solid work. He's going to have some heart rate. Lovemore still hasn't made contact. There's a place behind the black boat. Yep. Needs to get to Vold first and then up behind Pedersen. He's already at Vold now. Then he needs to move out behind Pedersen. There he goes. And now behind Pedersen. And he should be safe for a while. The whole group back together. Good chase from that four. It looked like it was over for Lovemore at one stage. Yeah, it's a good fight back onto that bunch. And Vedel paddles down. He's done enough. And he's going to get caught. No, not quite. Alonso almost caught him. There goes Romalo. Vedel's going to get squeezed in by Burkett. Alonso falls back. <laughs> And up comes Garakachea. Now Alonso is going to take up and go maybe around Foley. Squeeze Foley back into the V. Here he comes. Foley. I don't think Foley's going to have enough. Surely he can't have enough after all that. He has. So it's either Foley's a lot better than we thought he was or a lot more desperate. It could go either way. Foley just needs a break in the clean water at the front there. So Romalo leads. Lovemore, nicely positioned now. He can have a little rest also. Pedersen, certainly not having this all his own way, that's for sure. Foley slugging his way back into this one. Bringing some of the form that he showed yesterday right back into it. Hey, how are you? Good. Nice to see you. Hello, Brian. All right. <laughs> Easy. So we're getting celebrity guests into the commentary zone now as Alonso gets squeezed back behind Foley so we're joined by the coach of Mads Pedersen an old competitor of mine one of the best there's ever been as Foley takes the lead we introduce you to Tor Nielsen who joins us in commentary Tor how's your man doing um 
it, it's looking good, but uh, when I see all the other paddlers, it's looking good. Too. Look good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, <laughs> and you know how it is. You know, yeah. it's uh, like uh, everybody's watching everyone, and then, you know that's a. So we have to get a little bit further in the race yeah. before we can see some uh, weakness uh, in in some of the competitors because uh, it's it's a hard game, you know, from now on. Well, they they had it down to three with Romalo, your man. Mm and uh, Alonso. Did you have a high hopes then that that might be it? Or well, it, think it's it just indicate that it could probably happen next time. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, or maybe the time the after. The time after, yeah. because, and, and uh, I think, uh, like, Romario is just trying uh, everybody out. Yep. So, so he didn't went that hard. Yeah. So um, everybody's sneaking, you know, a little bit, you know, see testing everybody. So, do you know, you, you must know, Johan Vedel, second guy in the team. I've never heard of him before, which is my ignorance, but he's doing a good job here today. Yeah, he's been, um, well, he came last year and said, hey, will you, will you look after me and uh, I can train with the guys? And, and he was very, first time, you, well, I, I wasn't sure if I uh, would let him in, but he's very he very keen to 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 try and do and listen and do everything. Wow. So and and he made a great uh, improvement yeah. for, for in one year, great improvement. So um, and he's very very glad to to paddle with the yeah. two other guys I'm training. So we've got an extra added bit of pressure now. They put the camera on us tour, which is always a bit, yeah. bit stressful, right? Now I'm nervous. So, <laughs> so I, I wasn't nervous before. Here they come for the portage. We'll keep with the paddlers until after that. Romalo leads. Foley on the far side with Alonso. Alonso wants to come left. And there's going to be, oh, it's quite tight coming left because it was Vedel who wanted to go right at the same time. Romalo looking super cool at the front. Burkitt running well. Alonso tidy. Pedersen, not the best on that one. He's just oh, got a bit caught. I, th I think he's going in for a drink. Okay. Uh, that's what he told yep. me. Yep. So uh, he's just taking it easy. You hope. I hope. <laughs> yeah, every, I hope everything. <laughs> but he didn't, he, do it. I th he didn't do it. Yeah, he did go through the drinks. Yeah, yeah he did. So, so it's... Vedel at the back of the group. Foley takes it this time. Again, it's Romalo and Alonso in there. This time Burkett closer to the front. Pedersen just behind. It's a nice, tidy group again. Just behind Pedersen is Lovemore. Then Garakachea in the blue. Foley not doing the damage we saw last time, but damage nonetheless. Everyone's having to work. The Gorvan of Argentina. Panacouk of Belgium. And Faria of Portugal. All come out together. So. Pedersen comes round the outside of Burkitt. Genies of France, Kippen of Australia. I think he was hoping to be a bit more in contact with the leaders than he is at the moment. Was looking really strong in training. James Russell, a misfortune on the last portage, back with Paufler and from Czech Republic, Pavlik. So taking us back to the front of the race and it's still Foley. Foley raced yesterday in the under 23s. Did you see him? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. he's training out here. Does he train with you guys? No, he's not. He's training in uh, Silgebo. Okay. Uh, with those guys. And he did a very good job. I must yeah, say. yesterday so very, was really uh, well managed. Yeah, and very clever and... Um, Alonso, he's the one being clever today. Slovakia there, Milan oh. Dorna. 
I missed that. What happened? Everyone in here is laughing except me. Uh, somebody <laughs> handing over drinks in the second inning shoot just went head over. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe we can get a quick <laughs> replay of that because I feel like I've missed out on a laugh here. The Jokos there, just trying to stay in contact with those other two. So that run through the drinks lane, I missed all the excitement. That was the Slovakian and his crew. I was looking up names at the time. I feel I've really missed out. Tor Nielsen, our special guest at the commentary point. The fact that you're hosting it in Denmark and there's so much interest and public support. How have the athletes responded? Here comes, here be comes the replay. Be positive, or Boom, be straight player. down. At first, they, uh, you know, a little bit suspicious. If could this work here? Because we've never been in this part of the, the country. And... Um, and uh, we had the Danish championships last year. It was uh, it was a good arrangement, and little uncertain if, if they could lift it all. But I must say, they have done an incredible job here, incredible. And they they had I heard yep. about 200 people uh, from the town or from the city, and uh, and uh, to help, and that's amazing, amazing job they did. And I, mean, I love it here, and the surroundings is beautiful as well. Yeah. Suddenly we have another world-class marathon venue we can add to the international calendar. Yeah, I would say so. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a very close to that. So, um, so, um, How have the athletes responded? Do they feel the pressure? Um, does it, does it, with everybody watching them now, does it create extra pressure for them? Well, I, I think um, sometimes uh, athletes are very funny because... Well, they they just follow along, you know, where there's the world championships, where there's the water we can paddle, and then then they just fit in, they uh, and and try to do their best. But they're very happy to be here. And Mads, in particular, being the person who's on the posters and on all the adverts and the videos, does he like that? Does he respond well to that? Um. Yeah. Well, it's um. Well, I, I don't know uh, what what you mean about respond for. Does it put more pressure on him, or does he like it? Oh, he like it. <laughs> as a, as he like everything, you know, and he likes everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's he's a drinker? Or <laughs> no, no, I I have uh, I had my suspicion, but but uh, he's um, he's a just very just uh, stray guy, you know. He's just uh, happy for for doing this. And, and very happy for what he's doing. So no real excitement in the front group, just changing positions, fairly routine stuff up there while we've been chatting. No changes, no one left behind. Um, I think the only one who isn't there that was there before was Pelly, and he's, he left a while ago. Garak Achea goes to the front now, does his share at the front as they head up to the top turn for the fourth time. Well organized group, just one space at the back to that left that isn't massively comfortable. I think that's Cellier. It's either Cellier or Vedel at the back. And away he goes Burkett, I think. Burkett left, Pedersen right. Romalo to the right of Pedersen. It isn't Burkett, it was uh, Garak Achea. This is a little bit intense, isn't it? Mm. Somebody upset somebody there, and that's broken the group into two very temporarily, but it did break the group into two. When they go that fast, Tor, I mean, it's not a sustainable speed. It seemed a bit excessive for where they are on the course, but nothing's done for no reason. So what, do you think they're testing testing each other there just to assert a bit of dominance or what? Well, it, it haven't, it haven't changed since, since we've been paddling. No, right? it hasn't. <laughs> no, and everybody's looking at, ah, is he tired, you yeah. know, is he... Here we go again. It just seems... 
un yeah, there's unnecessary stuff going on. It's like maybe the here we go again. It's Alonso this time. It's like the Argentinians upset someone, but they seem to be picking on him a little bit here. Yeah. <clears throat> so Pedersen leads. Romalo on his right. Alonso on his left. Tucked in the back. Burkett round the outside there in the blue is Garakachea. Closest to us is Vold. And then the other four just trying to regain contact with the group. Japan running through the portage. That's Masaki Mori. Finished his first 10 K. 17 and a half to go. <laughs> so you, yeah, expect the group to be reformed by the time we come back. So off the back of that group, struggling a bit during that break was Foley, Lovemore, Sellier. Oh, who's off the back on their own? That could be Foley. Did a big catch up. I think it is Foley on his own. A long way back on the group now. <coughs> Foley would have come into today's race with the warning bells on after his performance yesterday. But at the same time, he also would have come in with the uh, mileage of his achievements. So having signaled what he was capable of doing, but also possibly with a bit of wear and tear. Here we go again. The churn has begun. The South Africans come in at such a steep angle on this group. There's no need for that, right? No, no. But, but as, as we said before, it's, Nothing's test, changed. It, it's <laughs> testing and testing all, all the way. You know, And some try to push it and uh, see what can you do for a real burn, you know. This is pretty Ryan intense at the moment. This is intense. I can tell Ryan in his eyes. That's, uh, this is hardcore right now. Why? Why? That's, that's a personal, that's a personal venture. It is, right it's a there. personal thing. There's nothing but personal no. in no. that. There was no purpose race-wise. That was just a, a statement of, I am better than you. But even when it's personal, you know, it, it can change things very, yeah. very quickly. Uh, f for the guys in the bag. Yeah, and it has. And yeah. Alonso, he's got to make his way back up there. Yeah. And I think he's he's always doing a very clever thing. You oh, know. Alonso just is amazing. Oh, yeah. just, just moves around yeah, yeah, yeah. in those waves at the back. He is so efficient at this. It's getting a bit uncomfortable now in that front group because it's so small that you know if you're not in the front four, you're on a wave that isn't ideal. So nobody's going to want to give up their front four wave unless it's for a friend or unless they fancy their chances in the V-Wash. Alonso to the right of Romalo. There's a potential that he will want to come round Romalo and get to the side of Pedersen. Vold in the back now and hungry with Sellier, who has done a great job. You see, the burn made a difference. Yeah. Now, a little bit. Garaka chair in the background, but I'm not sure what that distance is. The camera makes it look close there. Alonso, he's going to tuck in behind Burkitt. There you go. Much nicer wave for him there. Second Dane, Vedal with Garaka chair and Lovemore out to the right. Alonso so sharp at seeing what's available. Yeah. 
Who, who does, um, I mean, it's hard to pick between those guys, but who does Mad see as his real main competitor, Burkitt, presumably? Uh, well, he, he always uh, have the strongest computers that he, he, he's uh, aware of is always the, the, those who are fast and sprint. Yeah. Because, well, it's very strange with Matt because um, I have seen him sprint very, very good. And sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't, you know, always. But um, when it gets to him, he, he goes extremely fast. So, so catch up again by Garak Achea, so and he brings Vedal with him. I would say Berger and Ramayo. Right. Would I say? Yeah. If it comes to to to, sprint to, finish. The, to the sprint finish. So yesterday we saw um, Knudsen mm. do, and he left the portage first, and the way I saw it was he just managed his last thousand meters quite badly. He went too fast for too long and then was too easy to overtake. Well, we talked about it. Talk about it after the portage. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, Pedersen. This could be a meaningful break. Romalo knows that if Pedersen gets away, it's going to hurt. And Alonso isn't there in that shot at the moment. There's the bow of Alonso's boat. And this is going to be tough for the guys because this is meaningful. This could be a significant break. Peterson to the baying of his adoring fans as he comes through the portage zone, suddenly putting himself well clear of the front bunch. Romalo behind him in the yellow cap. Alonso way back. It's only Romalo that's going to get in with Pedersen. Great put in from Pedersen. And he's going. He's taking off Ivan. Burkitt and Romalo, the chase two. Alonso's upside down in the water. Tragic for him. When you see how good these guys are at this in practice, you can tell how much stress there is when they make a mistake like that. You do not see Alonso make a mistake like that ever. He is kicking himself. Great so there's the gap and it's big. He's going to make this stick, right? That's big enough. Well, I can say if you get a little bit more than that. <laughs> that is a big gap. The chase two are solid, though. You've got um, Romalo and Burkitt. That's a, that's a frightening pair to stay ahead of. Because uh, if the gap is getting a little bit bigger to Matt. Then they have very, they will be have very, very hard to get up, yep. up there because um, even if they um, um, share washes uh, yeah. and, and, uh, and switch, but uh, because uh, he got an extremely pace, I can yeah. tell. Yeah. If he's if he's free and he see, he goes. It's be very hard. It's yeah. going to be very hard to catch up. It's a long way to go though. Yeah. But the guys behind him need to believe they can catch him up. If they, they, don't, if they don't believe, then it's going to fizzle out very quickly. Yeah. That's a big gap. Yeah. That's what, 15 seconds there. We've got a black boat coming up to join. Let's see Alonso in the replay. Let's see what went wrong. There he is, back with Garakachea and Lovemore. So here goes Pedersen. He got out first. He got out cleanly, and he's away cleanly. That is a, a big gap there. All the others in well. There goes Alonso. Hits the landing stage. There, boom, in he goes. So, it was, sorry, it was uh, Volt that hit the landing stage, and that just pushed Alonso out into the deeper water, and it's all over for Alonso. Which is a shame because he attacked this race so well. Have you seen him be that aggressive after the first portage? Oh, yeah. I have seen it before. But Long time ago. Yeah. But um, but um, I can see the gap is getting a little bit smaller. smaller. Yeah. So, And now it's up to Matt to, to find the speed. 
and uh, and hope for uh, that they will break yeah. when they switch. Jokos getting in with the Slovakian. They're a good 500 meters down on that. So Vold joins the chase three. Romalo doing the work at the moment. It's decision time for those three. They can either choose to stay in the race for gold or they start racing for silver in which time that gap will open up dramatically. So we're on lap five of eight at the stage, just past the one hour mark of the K1 men's seniors race. And it's the hometown. Oh, no. Oh. Nope. The chase group isn't taking itself seriously there, it looked. This is absolutely not the way to do it. No. Oh. Although there's intent now. I think that was, was he changing his paddle length to go? He might have been changing his paddle length. Or faffing about. Or fiddling with his drinking system. One of the two. Kind of crazy. You, you lost, what, two, three seconds there? That's visible when you're chasing, and it's, yeah. I don't know, it just seemed, the other two is it worth it? But he is, he's certainly paddling with intent now. And so it'll be um, interesting to talk to him after, see what he was doing there. Yeah. And when Matt is doing the turn, right after the turn, he will speed up, because when they come around the turn, they, they can see if the gap is getting bigger. Oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. That's what he was going to do. Excuse the language from uh, Tor. He's an amateur in this. Uh <laughs> yeah, uh, and I like it. <laughs> that gap is growing. And the, there's another change in the chase group. And I don't know. It just doesn't look well organized enough. That's Romalo again now, I think. Well, how, how many kilometers is left now, would you say? I don't know, we're on lap five of eight. We've got to be about it's about halfway through, so about 13, 14. Okay. It's a long way to go on your own. It is. Yeah, we've just seen Kisley do it, though. Correct. And that, that gap's getting bigger. It is. Does Mads train in a group, or does he do a lot of work on his own? He trained in the group with Philip and... And uh, Johan, and I'm coaching yep. all three. And we've been to a training camp in, uh, in Sabavia in it Italy this year. And why, did, why did you choose that as a venue? Because uh, this setup this year we have uh, done more, more like a thousand meter works yep. for change and for change uh, for mats also. Um, and uh, of course he has uh, some thoughts about that because uh, he, he, wants, he would like to go to the Olympics for a thousand. Okay. So he will, um, he will give it a go. And if not next year, he will. So did Denmark qualify a place? No, they haven't, but they have a microscopic chance, chance to, to yeah, f for, uh, what is it? One, one more place from Europe, or two? I think two. Two. Yeah. Here comes the man, Pedersen. That's the third group back there, being led by Alonso, and that third group looks more busy than the second. But we train a lot of sessions with them. Um, that's opened up a lot now. Yeah. That second group 
has a lot more chance of being caught by the third group than it does of getting back to Pedersen. It, it is it is incredible yeah it is i mean in any other world that chasing group would be quite intimidating but i think i think it in as much as anything it's a mental thing mads has done it a couple of times before hasn't he where he's pulled away and i think they know that if if they personally close that gap they're going to be in such a bad state that they run the risk of not getting anything especially if they fail to close it so I think the closing is only done at sort of 95%, not 100%. And to catch Mads, you have to be 100%. I think they're, they're, half their mind is on second and third and half is on catching him up. And I don't think it's a full commitment. But, but we have trained a lot of that uh, thing where we have some, you know, we give handicaps where, where to, and he, he can go 18 kilometers faster than I did. Right. We have a special course for doing this, and he's he's just doing a certain speed, and if he gets the speed, it's it's very it will be very hard. Yeah. If he go he goes like that, I would say about fourteen and a half kilometers an hour yeah. now, and uh, in the beginning it was maybe uh, fifteen, sixteen kilometers an hour, an hour, but but after a while he set he settles down. But that's full on, isn't it? You yeah. can see his face. You can see. But he can he can go that for that for eighteen eighteen kilometers. Right. That's his speed graph. On I speed. can't believe he's looking over quite as much as he is. No. I'm at a, but my Matt, he, he just want to do it. Yeah. I can tell it's. Uh, that was an incredible pace. Knowing that he's still got thirteen k to go. Yeah. But that's the chase group, and there's just not the intensity, is there? There's no, there's no, um, there's no motivation and there. no will. No, no. Japan come into their portage with Mori. Quick empty out, shoulder it. Appreciative crowd giving Maury lots of cheer and encouragement as he comes through the portage. I think Maury is going to be swallowed up by Pedersen fairly quickly. Pedersen just 500 metres from us now. It says something about the nature of this race. If you get lapped on lap five or six, it yeah. speaks volumes, I'm afraid. He is going to get lapped on this, on this next lap, I think. It's going to be very tight for him. Back to the front and Mads Pedersen. The gap is huge. No. Yeah. Looking at about 40 seconds, 50 seconds probably there. Let's see. 15 kilometers an hour. So he's done 15k. He's got 11 and a bit to go. And that is some gap. Is there a special training regime at all? To get up to a high speed is one thing, to get up to sprint speed, to maintain a speed of 14, 15 an hour for a long period of time. Does that require a special training? <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, hard. <laughs> it's hard, yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, it's not very, um, it's not very uh, uh, scientific way we do it. You just go on the limit, and see how how long how time long you can last and stay there. That's a, that's it's very easy you know, actually. Do you set a time limit? Let's go hard for 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I said you you can go. You do it for an 
go and you go for 18 kilometers, uh, 14 and a half kilometers. Now, it's on the on the on the limit, you know. Yeah. So you you don't monitor that limit with heart rates and stuff. You just say this is the speed. Let's do it. See how long you can last. Yeah, but well, there's always some um, corrections uh, for for Matt. You know, because sometimes when he gets carried away, you can see his um, his rating yeah. is getting up, and he becomes inefficient. Yeah. Yeah. But when it's get efficient, so then it's uh, very very high. Yeah. Does he have a bulkhead in the back of his boat there? He got. Um, it's a cost now. It's a custom made. You know the yeah. the. It's actually uh, would say that the new boat from from Nilo yeah. is a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea, and I uh, tested it yesterday and the day before yesterday, and it's uh, it's amazing because right. uh, and I call it the boat. I call the boat uh, K5 because it's good for five kilometers <laughs> when you had the water just run out. Yeah, yeah, and Mass have done that in the that. He did the 5k in that boat. In the no, new boat, no, this is a custom-made right, boat. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just a, um, a single. Yep. Um, made with Scott. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With the bulkheads. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. Um, you don't worry that if there's a small hole somewhere. You yes, we were very worried, <laughs> and, and on the sprint boat there was a small hole in the beginning. Uh, right. So, yeah, and uh, for the world championships, uh, but we got got it fixed the day before, yep. and. Uh, and uh, they did an amazing job, Nilo. Wow. Really good. Yeah, I mean, Burkett looking over his shoulder. What, what are you looking over your shoulder for at this point? Alonso. Still with this group with Lovemore, Sellier and Garakachea. And the other Dane. I'm super impressed by this guy. Look how big he is. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's, well, I wasn't going to say it because yeah, I'm a professional again, and uh, yeah. I can't really say it. But Vador, he is uh, a couple of pound over his fighting weight. Put it that way, and uh, he's but he's doing a great job. And I uh, think he's been bigger than that. And I told him the first thing we have to train that. The first thing we had to do by training is that you lose some weight. Right. And when he lost weight, he got. So much better. Wow! And he's very, he's very good at sprints. You know, he's very good at the. So he's more like solid. Yeah, he was very fast for the start here. Yeah, he's more solid guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can tell you, if uh, Faria, Prada, Panakuk all leaving together, if the waves are like that, he can sit in everything. Wow! He is amazing. He is amazing. Kippin, Genies and Paufler. I don't think any of those three are having the day they hoped they would have. <laughs> Pelly coming in. He's also lost motivation now. He's falling back through the pack. He was with that front group in the early stages, but always on the outside of it. And that adds up over time. And now he's struggling on his own, being hunted down by the group you can see behind him, Josh Australia, Kippen. France, and Germany. Kipping in and away. Powerfler and Genius. Just not coming together on the day for power plays. Not looking comfortable. The trouble with power fluids, you never know which one it is. There's yeah. three of them. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm always unsure about which one is which and where they are. And yeah, it's, you never know what sort of form any, any of them are in. And sometimes they really shine. James Russell coming through the portage. Got his oh. rudder knocked up, Rudy maybe from his original incident, just bending that rudder down. Back up and running. I've seen that before. Back up and running. 
Well, the rudder bending thing. It's a long time ago, man. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Yeah. Hopefully, James Russell will have a trouble free second half. Pedersen, Volt. Oh, they're just best lap times. But a lap time, I mean, look at that. 40 seconds quicker than anyone else's lap time. That's a lot. Mm. Over 3K mm. or 3.5K. Yeah. 40 seconds over 3.5K. That's immense. Cox Belgium on the screen there. It's a little bump, bumpy there. Is it? Isn't that a I think the wind's just come up again. It went down a little way, yeah. and now it's now the wind's come back up. Don Cox, the second of the Belgians. Panakuk already gone through. So we're monitoring, you're talking about monitoring speed. That's quite hard to do because conditions obviously change day to day and you just sort of average it out over your 18K time trial or? Well, he's, um, he's about, um, he beat my best time and I tell you, many have tried to beat it uh, and he beat it with, uh, I think, 45 seconds. <laughs> That's uh, heavy duty. Yeah. But that's that's uh, I said to Matt. Well, I'm tr I'm trying to get you better than I ever did, because then it can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's my purpose with training mats. So. He's obviously a willing trainer. He wants to train. He likes training. Yeah. 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 Some, some I mean, just, just for everyone else out there who looks at this and thinks that's superhuman and yeah. they can't do it, does he have days where he turns up and just says, you know what, I really can't be bothered to No, but no. I, I have a funny story about that because uh, some weeks ago we had, our, it was uh, in July, we had a, a race uh, from my club. It's around an island, uh, four, four laps. And he had been doing this uh, race many times. And suddenly I see him on the other side, and he had to go into the boys, with, with, with the Finnish boys. He had to go around them, and he, but he just w went away and was uh, uh, trying to get just straight. And uh, he was not thinking, you know. And we sent a boat out and <laughs> got him in, you know. And um, after that, and I said to him, well, uh, for that, you, I'm going to punish you. <laughs> because uh, and what what are you gonna do? Well, uh, you, you you must not train. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well, it's just a joke, yeah. but yeah. it's uh, but it, but it's it's how how he is, you know. Yeah. Oh, can I train? You know, that so he's always willing to train. Always, never misses a session. No, never. Even on his nan's birthday. No, <laughs> no. I think there's something people could learn who are out there thinking they're good and trying to be good is that if you want to do it, one thing is you have to do it with intent and two, you have to do it consistently. Yeah. You can't just dip in and dip out and think that you're good because one day you meet this man on the race and you there's nothing you can do. Japan is just about to find out that after <laughs> six laps of eight, he's just been lapped and that's... That's a harsh reality. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is, in that club in Japan, his club mates think this guy's really fast. Yeah, yeah. And he is really fast in comparison. But then you need your dose of reality every now and then. <laughs> and everyone who's the best at their club thinks they're good until they meet someone who's the best at another club. And then when you get to be the best in all the clubs, you meet the best in the other countries, and then it just gets harder and harder. This is Sam Newlands. Sam Newlands coming through, the ophthalmologist by trade, living in the UK, working there, but originally from the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand.
taking the all black motif to the extreme. Absolutely everything is black. Masaki Mori knows that he hasn't got to do the full 27k. The, the Japanese guy, he looks like me when we train together. <laughs> <laughs> just, just falling back yeah. gradually. We have a race every Tuesday, yeah. and uh, you know handicaps. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, sometimes when uh, Matt he, he gets me, it goes like, yeah, straight past, past yeah. nothing you can do. I, I, I try a little bit, you know, and uh, if I can wash right for, for 20 meters, that will be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then there's a huge recovery period after that that doesn't feel good. No, right? no, no. But I'm happy about that. I've, I, try, I've I love tried to training in the last eight weeks for, you know why I was training for the last eight weeks. And man, it was extraordinary eye-opener to me how hard it is now to train. And, and the recovery from going over speed, even for a short time, is just intense. And... Uh, yeah, I feel your pain as Mads goes past. I wouldn't know what to do with that. I'm struggling to keep up with the women. <laughs> yeah. Don't laugh. No, no. You just laughed. No, you I, laughed. I was, you laughed in my face. Uh, yes, because <laughs> I was thinking about myself. I have the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see how, how fast the women are, this and yep. like, it's incredible. I don't think. I don't think. Actually, on 200 meter, I, I don't think I've been faster than uh, Lisa Carrington. No, absolutely <laughs> not. I mean, you would, yeah. It, I, I, uh, I think I've done 38 one time, and she did 38 for the Worlds. Yeah. Now. Yeah. That's yeah, the 200 meter definitely evolved in the time it was an Olympic event. It evolved from just yeah. guys that could go very fast to guys that could go super fast, and it was a different, a whole different game. Because none of those guys that can do the super fast can go even finish 500 meters. Yeah. So it's uh, obviously a different method of making yourself go along. So 150 Jacob, there. Jacob Chain of Team Canada. Yeah, he's looking like he might not make the uh, full distance either. He's being hunted down by Mads, who's opposite him on the lake now with about 300 meters to go to his next portage. You're looking at him now on screen tour, and he's obviously doing having a great day. Do you look at him all the time and think, right, where are the improvements there? Well, the improvement for Matt is uh, what we are training constantly on. It, it's um, his uh, way to sprint, and um, that's that's w that would be the uh, yeah. Because it, you know he can he can do thousand meter. He was in the selection race f uh, this year for. And um, he did uh, 330 on a thousand, which is quite which good. is quite good. Yeah. Um, well, it's not it's not uh, in the top, but it's uh, but it's still there, and, and it's unbelievable yeah. that he can yeah. do it. Um, so that's why uh, I think uh, if we could get a little bit more muscle on him, uh, that's a difficult part for Matt. Okay. Uh, uh, that's uh, then we can he can do better. But he sometimes opened the the race the Tuesday on uh, three thirty nine for five k, right, and just blow it away. You yeah. Know, so. And now he has settled. Yeah, he's he happy. Yeah, yeah he's he, happy he, he has settled. Yeah. yeah, and maybe we'll have a little cheer. <laughs> yeah, I think we will on this run through. I think we'll have a little paddle lift. There you go. <laughs> But uh, two weeks before the world's uh, sprint, he, he was sick. And, well, I was a little bit worried because he lost a lot of weight. Oh, wow. So um, well, I just had to ground him and uh, see how it went. But then he recovered very good. good. So. so in the sprinting, he's got um, yeah, you've 
the guy who's done your thousand meters for as long as we can all remember now is Rene. Yeah. And then now you've got uh, um, Torben Brass coming up. Yeah. Trying for the thousand meters as well. He, he, win, he won the under 23s this yeah, year. Yeah, he, uh, he's also a, a very incredible paddler. Yeah. And, uh, he had a bad day today or a tough day today. Is he, yeah. is he not well? Or? Yeah, well, I don't think he, he felt that well. Right. Because uh, we actually talked about uh, putting them together in a K2. Right. But uh, maybe not. No. Yeah. I think also think he's very happy with the, the win. Uh, for the under, uh, yeah, the under 23, yeah. five and you know how it is. If you win something big, you know, yeah. comes a, comes a whole comes, uh, yeah. a decline. Yeah. So, yeah. so the fight for silver, bronze, and two nothings goes on in this group. Burkett away with intent. Japan in with a chance. Of a V wash here, you'd, you'd go for it, wouldn't you? Well, come on! It looks very heavy for Burger. Yeah, uh, I don't think he'll make it. Strange choice of where to come up the group for Vold there. Yeah, coming up on the wrong side. Yeah, that's kind of. What? Why would you do that? He, now he's changed his mind. After, <laughs> after he got there, he changed yeah. his mind and comes back. Love more. Alonso, Celier. All going to get a bit tight there. Hard to see how Alonso does those portages so well. Mm. Made that mistake yeah. and cost him a lot. Gara Kachea with them and the Dane Vedel. Spain 2 coming through. That's Prada. Panakuk behind him. Vergorven with him also in the yellow boat and Faria of Portugal. They'll all be together in the next minute or so. So having just seen the big guns go through the portage, crowd loving the fact that this is turning into the Mads Pedersen show. And Ivan, we're sizing up two carbon copy performances to take gold. Two it is, it is freakishly similar charges. to the women's race. Eerily yeah. Similar. speed chart momentarily. On so the there's end. somebody who's going to have their race shortened for them any minute now. Do you reckon they're grateful, Tor? When he comes past, they think, oh, that's one less lap. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm not really nervous, but, you know, and um, about that. And I'm r not really nervous about his performance ever, but because um, I'm just trying to give him uh, some sort of a find out who, who, who am I as right. a paddler. He's not me, you know. Yep. He's, uh, and just uh, give him give a... Uh, try to get some experience about that. Oh, we nearly lost another supporter there. It's all action in the support lane. <laughs> Frenchman did well to stay on his feet there. That was nearly a he, that, that's someone there who will never make the French football team because <laughs> he should have gone down. He should be rolling by now. He's Garvey, never. <laughs> is not tolerated in this sport. Jokos with the Slovakian. Dorna. Pau Fleur, Genies. It all looks a bit bleak down this end of the field at the moment. Yeah, 
this is a day that's going to go into file 13, races to be forgotten, I think. James Russell coming round. He's had rudder problems. He had an incident at the portage with Pavlik there. They're coming in together. Not the day they hoped for. Easy out and the morale boost of the support of the crowd as they come through the finisher. Not the running through the support ends. lane this time, so we assume his rudder's okay now. In retrospect, that was a remarkable repair in the heat of the moment. If you've got rudder admin and it requires the physical strength to bend that pin straight, and you just never know if you've underdone it, overdone it, overcooked it. Oh, I mean, your big fear when you bend a rudder down is that it comes off in your hand. <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst thing. You just think, please don't break. They're away, Pavlik away. Round the top turn on his own. For the first time as he came through that <coughs> last portage, Mads dropped his focus and allowed himself the pleasure of just waving to the crowd. And for the first time, having raced this race and dominated it for, for six laps, he was able to connect with the people that have been supporting him. Yeah. He obviously feeds off that and makes him, <coughs> inspires him. Well, he, he, he loves he loves the crowd and he loves every everyone, you know, like and, and he loves to compete and, and and he has so much, um, you know, what do you call it, uh, over... Uh, it's what vive in French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think it's the difference like, on the previous two laps, he was in an area where the intensity has a pain level that you can't lose focus and keep. Now he's dropped down to a, an intensity where you can yeah. dip in and dip out of pain as and when you choose. And I think he's much more relaxed, isn't he, now than he was on those two solid laps where he was like, yeah. everything has to be focused. But he tried. He said he, he he wanted to try in a third port. It's just not to break away, but he will try to test them there. And but then uh, he got the op opportunity, and then he just made his yeah. decision. And I just always tell him, if you make a decision, you just Go stick to it. it. Yeah. If you want, that, that's what these guys didn't do. Yeah. They 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 change their mind too often. Catch him, not catch him. Shall we, shan't we? And by the time they'd made that decision, he was gone. Yeah. So who are we catching up now? Canada? We're looking at Jacob Chain there. Jacob Chain, who for a moment is going to bask in the limelight alongside the fastest man in the world, in marathon racing at least. He looks cheerful enough in his picture, but slightly different in reality at the moment. Uh, there will be 30 seconds in your paddling career when you had a grandstand seat to watch Mads Pedersen at his very best. It's a privilege. At his very best tour, or how much more do you think you can do? Oh, he can do. He can. He can do harder <coughs> than that. Yep. You saw last year he made a mistake in the porridge. Yeah. And uh, he had to catch up, and he was very comfortable until that. When, when he said, "When I had to catch up, that was so hard for me to to control anything." So um, he just did yeah. his. So. He can't do the speed, you know, so, but, but, um. But you think you can raise his average speed even higher next year? Another, I don't know, depends half a K an Depends hour. On, the, on the weather, I would say. If it's warmer in the weather, he can do it. But um, now it's a little bit cold and uh, 
and the muscles get a little more yeah. stiff after that, and uh, your your hands hurt a little bit, you know. And but now he's he's satisfied with that speed. So, um, but he could do he could do harder than that now. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Sam Newlands of Team New Zealand. I think he's the next target, isn't he? Sam Newlands, but Mads. Yeah. I think he's the next one. He's got quite a big lead at the moment. And only one big lap to go for Mads when he gets back to us this time. Fairly amateur. <laughs> That's fast food. Food. Go and interview him, Stefan. Interview him now. <laughs> what he's got a face full. Face full of jelly beans. That's a. Oh dear. Sometimes when you see that stuff, Tor, and you, we saw the Japanese yesterday, you've seen a few, and you just think, you know, they must watch other people and what they do. And yeah, who who takes a mouthful of food? And and now's not the time, is it really? Well. No. You think, you but as you said before, I'm oh, sorry. going to the front. As we've said throughout the last half an hour, there's been no desire, no urgency in that group. They're just coasting through the final quarter of this race. This is lap seven of eight, and there's the man at the front who has driven a wedge between himself and the rest of the field and is uh, making a strident statement not only to the canoeing world but to the Danish fans that have been itching to see him perform at home. He is delivering and delivering a performance par excellence. So also in that second group you've got Romalo who would be one of the bigger chasers but he's got K2 tomorrow and that's potentially his bigger chance of a win. Mm -hmm. So that that's probably factors into whether he was chasing today. Sure. So Pedersen looking quite relaxed now compared to how he was a couple of laps ago. This looks very sustainable. And he's coming on to his eighth lap. It's going to be touch and go whether he catches Newlands in time to shorten Newlands' race. Round the bottom turn cans comes Vance Pedersen. One more full lap to go after this. And then what he can start sizing up as his victory procession into the finisher at Lake Hills. See if he'll afford himself the luxury of dropping his guard to connect with his fans. All focus as he comes into the jetty takeout. Neatly done. He's already, and he hasn't even left the pontoon, and he's waving. Like a Cheshire cat. And why not? He's earned the luxury to start savouring this. He's looking around, looks up to the grandstand. There's no fist bump, but the Danish flags are out. Must be Little look over his shoulder there to see where the others are. Where are the others? We had to look to the side instead. Yeah. <laughs> they're going around the bottom turn, Ken. <coughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. They are they're still opposite. Still 250 meters away from the bottom turn, Ken. And they are just loping through the kilometers. Romaglio at the front. So we're losing Tor, who's got somewhere better to be. That tells you what he thinks of us. It's been great. It's been great to have you, Tor. Thanks for your time and your insight. And it's always a pleasure. So we've lost our expert, and you're back to the clowns for the close of this race.
Romalo leads from Burkett. What a treat and what a time to have the man in the hot seat with us. So Vold. Romalo Vold Burkett. This is going to be silver and bronze. Burkett is defending champ would settle for silver, I think, at this stage. But I don't he's, think he's, he's got a lot of choice. He's, <laughs> he's not going to push for gold <laughs> no, for now. No, gold is done. And, and we knew that from an hour ago. I think they had, had written off that gold. They had already visualized the medal ceremony and the headlines that are going to be in the Danish papers tomorrow morning. And online. Is Burkett racing K2 on Sunday? No, he's not. But Vold will be and Romalo will be. And that might have factored in quite heavily into how hard they chased today. Uh, Burkett pushes on, oh, takes out Romalo's forgotten his boat. <laughs> Vold putting a little bit of a he burn is. here. He'd like to try and get onto the grass first, but he's... he's not many people overtake Romalo on a run, but he has. Oh, Burkett is hard to beat on the run. It's bread and butter for him, this. Quickly down to the put in, beautifully in. Vold's good to go as well. All three quickly and efficiently away. Burkett looks over his right shoulder just to make sure that everybody's back with him. Getting into the sharp end of the race, one full lap. You happy to sit with the three until the final turn or do you try and shrug them off before <coughs> the final portage? No, you can't break that group up. They're all too good at what they do. Chase group coming in. For Gorbin. For Gorbin has caught up to Garakachea and that group. This is uh, Panakuk. Probably the best race I've seen from him in a long, long time. Oh, look at the grimace. Grimace on him. But Alonso, love more. Last year's under 23 champ. Getting a taste of what it's like to bark with the big dogs. Panakuk, of course, already the over 35s Masters champion this week. Oh, he's punching above his just, weight here. Just to warm up for this one. The Gorvan goes. There is a luckless duck sitting on the beach right at the put in. It's about to get the this, fright of its life. This is. This man needs a bit of an applause because he has been awesome through the day. He's fading now. But Johan Vedel did himself proud. It's a large torso to get into that boat with an athletic jump like that. And as Tor was saying, that is a big block of muscle capable of powering a boat at high speed. Kippen and Pelly. Pelly really is done. <laughs> he's, he's had enough of today. <laughs> One long lap is going to seem like an awful long way for him. Masaki Mori. Yeah. <clears throat> Lapping up the occasion. Deliberate use of the word lapping there, Dave? Or no, I, I didn't mean wasn't to throw any the, irony in that. I no? didn't mean to throw the bob. I didn't <laughs> I, I realized once the bob had been thrown that it was inappropriate. <laughs> Powerfleur, Genies. Pelly. Pelly I mean, Pelly's just going to be overtaken by pretty much everybody now, I think. He's lost the world to live. Jokos there from Japan also. Milan Dorna. Hafler. Also losing the world. Yeah, he's... 
Back to the second group here, and they're all back together. Burkett on the left, Romalia on the right. Vold pulling at the front. Circle back to the question I asked earlier. All three content to just while away the miles on this final lap? Yep. Yeah, their Maybe race starts at the next portage. Take a chance, try and <coughs> wheedle some sort of advantage out of the final portage and then make it stick. You have to favour Burkett, really, on that final portage. Uh, Romalo, no, they can all run, can't they? Romalo's a good runner, and we just saw Vold overtake him, so he's a good runner too. There's everything to play for in that group. If you want to shade Andy, you need to get out well before him on the portage. If you even get out side by side with Burkett on one and you on the other, you are going to get done. He'll be in the lead before you get onto the grass, and he canters away when he's into the straight. His put-in is really good. He's one of those guys yeah. that literally hurls that boat out onto the water, puts in a foot as it's running away from him, and it just seamlessly carries on moving as he puts his butt into the seat. So you, if you want to extract any advantage over Andy, you've got to do something special either on the run into the portage or make sure you take out two seconds before he does. That's going to require burning some serious matches coming down to the turn cans. So Pedersen's seen that top turn for the last time. Sorry we didn't have the camera on you, Ivan, because you looked inconsolable as you put your Just hand into the, the packet and found the last little chocolate egg. The last chocolate egg, but on the last lap of the day. So it's I, all feel, I figure it's okay. Is it your pacing and experience that's got the egg yeah. to the last lap? There goes Burkett. Vold to his right. There's still, there is motivation in this group already. On the far side of the course, you saw the winner. James, James Russell still moving well. Pavlik just trying to stay with him. He's having a bit of a chew on something there. Maybe that's a chocolate egg. Well, it's around about supper time. It's Here's your winner. We can well, two, two superb displays of Awesome paddling, really, this afternoon. First Kisley, now Pedersen. Just amazing. And almost carbon copies. Yeah. Hot off the line, absolutely insistent on dominating the front of the pack on the first lap or two. Both of them were scarcely willing to concede to sitting on a side wave, hardly slipped back onto the diamond, but for the majority of their time in the bunch, insisted on being at the front and doing all the dirty work. And when the time came to pull the trigger, untouchable. Yep. Untouchable and almost 100%. at the same place. The second half of the race was a solo charge away. It just yells conditioning of great champion athletes. Burkett, there's a lot of intent in that group now. So not content to uh, just sail around. Damage being done. Of the three, who's got the most to prove here? And he's done it. He's, he's, he's a world champion. He's a world games champion. Vold? I don't think Vold's won a world medal in singles before. A silver here would be a serious CV entry for Evan Vold. Yeah. Particularly against this sort of company here, which is familiar with getting onto the steps of the podium. Romalo's b missed medals in the past so many times. It took him a long time to get his first medal and his first win and so I've always I've always liked the way he races. I always I like him as a person. Yeah, he's a great guy, great attitude to it all. So I always he's always got kind of with my heart I always want him to get a medal in this company over the last 100 meters they're, they're all fast yeah there's no weak link in there 
And if you believe in fairy tales, in the Pedersen Burkett generation, he's been bridesmaid to them often. So if you're writing the fairy tale, if he could pull one over these yeah. two, it would be pretty special. <coughs> the portage is going to be hugely significant in how this race pans out now. One of the most fascinating things that came out of your chat with uh, Tor Nielsen, this passion that Mads has to be a successful sprint paddler and to go to the Olympic Games and make your mark there. You've got to kind of manage a career if you're going to do that. It doesn't happen overnight. No. You've, got, you've got the talent, you might have the raw yeah. speed, but to get there, you've now got to take a marked turn in your career and commit to a whole bunch of different series and commitments. That's not going to happen instantaneously, but... You need to get to a stage in your marathon career, I think, where you're going to say, right, I'm going to shift the priorities, put some stuff on ice. Cause, and your Olympic qualification cycle is so clearly set. Yeah. That it's quite easy yeah. to put a time frame on those plans. Probably too late to try and get to Paris, I don't know. No, I like, was saying there's, there's two small slots available at the end, at, uh, next season. So in the... the um, Continental qualifiers, there'll be two places from Europe okay. still available to go. So they'll they'll have a competition. I'm not sure where it is. Um, they will know already, obviously. And top two go. So that, w that could be the target through the winter. Big commitment with high risk. Cause I don't think there's, there's any risk, really. It, you know, training's training, and he'll still be fit. He'll yeah, still be okay. strong. And if he wants to revert to this... He's got a fair old cushion to play with yeah. anyway, and he'll still be up the sharp end of this. I think someone like him, you know, this is what his physiology is born to do, and he's got to tweak his physiology a little bit. Yeah, in, in many ways, it's what I was saying, he has to do something. He has yeah. to train with a goal in mind. It's been a manic season. It's been so cluttered. Yeah. These guys have been so busy, overcommitted, some will say. Yeah. But now... Other side of Marathon Worlds, poof, it's suddenly yeah. gone quiet. So maybe it's handy to set a long shot Hail Mary yeah. go at Paris. I think his mum made his number board on his back. It's all handwritten. And is it looking a bit sort of... A bit, yeah, a bit amateur. Kitchen table yeah, special. it is. Look at that. He's written that himself, surely. <laughs> So this is it, final portage. We'll have more than one paddle lift on this one, I'm sure. He's had a look back over his shoulder. He might even stop. All right, let's put let's put money on it. A stop in the middle of the portage. Take a bow. Take a bow and move on. Punch the ah, okay. Well, the crowd well, is already worked up to a froth here. I mean, the local team here has done a fantastic job of whipping this Danish crowd up into a frenzy. Mads Pedersen comes up to the right of the portage. It's his final one. This is the chasing group, which is a long way back. And there's Mads getting rid of his drinking system. And the final countdown rings out as is want here. He comes in. The beam is all over his sure. dial. This is your champion in Surely waiting. Surely he has to stop. Stop and bow. Uh, he, he'll dignify this occasion with a masterful athletic performance. He's, he's lapping this up. So 500 meters up, 500 meters down, and Mats will claim what has always been in the script, according to the organizers, that Mats Pedersen is going to win at home in Denmark in front of his fans. That chase group is in da imminent danger of being caught by the group behind. It's going to be quite crowded on the last portage. I know we're watching Mads go up to the top and back, and that's great fun, but there's changes happening here. These three are being caught by the group behind, which is only about 30, 40 metres behind now. Camera panning back now, and boom, there Ooh. they are. That's Alonso. A mistake here could be costly. I think Romalia got a sniff of that, which is why he jumped onto the front and suddenly put his foot down. They will all know exactly where those people are. Do you want to close this? Yeah. Got it. So. Game on. Vold looks over his shoulder. The hunter has become the hunted. 
They just had a couple of soft laps, and that was enough to give the chase group a sniff. Can somebody burgle a medal in the dying moments of this race? For Gorvin in the yellow boat, just fallen off the back of the chasing chase pack. And Romalo goes, speed's gone up a little bit. The gap's going to be too big, I think, to close. Well, thank goodness Romalo saw it because I think he's yelled to the others, this is about to get messy. There's one thing to do. Vold trying to squeeze through on the inside, probably not too wise. Remember, this is the, the arm wrestle for silver and bronze. It's not just keeping the hyenas off their backs. I think they're safe from that chase pack. Tantalizingly close, but not close enough. Away goes Burkett to the right-hand side. Not so much motivation from Romalo to hold him off. This is where Burkett can make a break. Oh, Burkett's fallen down. He's on his knees. Romalio's got away. All going wrong for Andy Burkett on the final portage. Bit of water in there for Burkett. He's trying to empty it out. He didn't want that as his, first, as his final portage, that's for sure. Vols coming it's up Romalo. on his inside. Andy Burkett, Andy Burkett under now pressure. into his stride. Here comes Burkett. He's going to run through all of them. Uh, Romalo's going to be taken on both sides. Coming through. Oh, it's painful. It's all to do with management here. Andy Burkett cannot afford time to wow, get that water that out of risky. the boat. <laughs> They're all going to leave together, though. Bold. Burkett's Burkett. pumping the boat. Romalo. I think Burkett's got a lot of water in that he boat. He is pumping for dear life to get the water out of that boat. He would love to persuade the others just to chill. Look at that. He's Vold's, I think that Vold's is a lot of water coming out Vold's of Vold's laughing at him, I think. But it's an opportunity for Vol to get away. Romalio goes to the inside. Burkett's still pumping furiously Burkett to get had a water big out. decision there then because he carried the whole portage with that much in there. Meanwhile. Alonso on his own. Down in the center. The moment that's been penciled into the script by the organizers at the Danish Canoe Federation. The fairy tale ending to Saturday afternoon's racing is Mads Pedersen. Coming down to claim the senior men's K1 gold. And he hasn't just claimed it. He has stamped his authority all over it. The mark of the champion. The mark of a man in superb form. As he comes down to the line, the crowd that is packed into the stands here at Lake Yells is going to rise as one. As Mats Pedersen claims gold medal for Denmark. Pumps his fists and paddle into the air. Champion. What a champion. Proper champion performance. Couldn't have been better today. Absolutely blitzed it. And it'd be great to go back up to that Ooh. turn if we can. We're on the, seeing the crowd enjoying their moment as well as his moment. And there we go. This is game on. Round the top turn. It's 500 meters to go. Vold has a really good turn of speed, but they all do. And Alonso is <laughs> just <laughs> snapping at their rudders. Bit by bit. It'll be too little too late for Alonso. Yeah, it's been yeah. a grave charge back. But this is the three from which we're going to decide silver and bronze. Vold at the front. So it's, again, we had this sort of situation yesterday. It's somebody will attack. And if the second person has anything left, they can attack straight after. And it leaves both the others vulnerable. So Vold leads. Burkett biding his time as is Romaglia on his left. Alonso coming out at the back for the big waves that <laughs> roll down the outside. Vold ups the stroke rate just Romalo a little. Romalo waiting patiently. They both are. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Vold. He's holding this the cards at this stage. This will be a big go by someone when it happens and then another proper go at the end by whoever hasn't been in that involved in the first one. Romalo waits. If Vold Burkitt doesn't... Burkett waits. To avert the ambush, <coughs> Vold could go early. It's about 200 metres now. Vold looks right Burkitt, at Burkett. Burkett's going to be the one who goes. There you go. Deep breath. It's going to be two or three strokes and away he goes. And... Waiting. Waiting. No. It's waiting. Romalo going. Romalo's... Not really or is Vold just too fast Vold for both of them? Here we go. Here goes Burkett. There goes Burkett on the right. 
Vold sees it. He's trying to match him. Andy Burkett is Romano's inching out. ahead. Burkett inching ahead. Vold throwing Burkett everything goes. and the kitchen sink at it. This is so close, but Burkett is ahead. Now Romalo has to come back at Vold. There's still time. It's going to be really tight. Burkett, but silver, Vold, bronze. Romalo just robbed of a place on the podium. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> I think Romalo has more force than anyone in this sport. And there's another one for him. A great race. Burkett threw on Vold at the death there. Alonso then, uh, pat along, on the back. It was yeah. a great fight back on his own without much help. Alonso Lovemore Panakuk, man of the match in that group. I, yeah, it's a long time since he's been up with those sort of names. Then for Gorvan. Then Portugal. Faria of Portugal. So the Danes got the fairy tale ending they wanted as uh, Garo Kachea, who was up with the leaders for so long, he faded back in the end. Both Argentinians inside the top He's ten. He's across the line. It's a tough call, like. If those Argentinians were my athletes, I'd rate Garakachea's performance above Vergorvan's, even though Vergorvan finished first. He was with that top group for much longer, had more to say in those early early period of the race. And I think that's a an important thing to look for in a race. It's not just Celia the result. And Prada involved in a sprint for pride to the line. It's not Prada who's going to take it. The result, but how you get to that result that counts for an awful lot. They were also up in the front group for a long time, these two. Prada seems pretty pleased with his day at the office. I think he sees the camera lens and the Instagram picture that he's going to be uh, <laughs> updating tonight. Hugs and congratulations galore from the paddlers that are on the other side of the finish line. Round the bottom turn, Pavlik and Russell. It's getting quite chilly in here now, and I didn't bring a sweatshirt today. Rookie era, Lola. Can't believe it. Whoa. Quite a local favourite coming in, I suspect. Uh, it's lots of Danish it's support. Johan Vedel. He's coming across the line now. <laughs> It's been a huge day for him. I think he's gained a lot of fans today for what he did in yeah. the first half of this race. I don't think anyone except his teammates and his coach thought he would be up there. And he was. It was a great race from him. And that's another case where the way he raced far outstripped the result he got. And hats off to him. That is a big day. Josh Kippen next across the line. For all his time and commitment, he'll possibly be a little bit down about that, but the Aussie always Thank leaves you. it all out on the water. And we have just one prize of the century. We've got another bag of mini eggs. Only one. Winner, winner, he'll, he'll chicken keep dinner. It all. Across the line oh, cool. comes the checks. <laughs> She's given me permission to steal your bag of eggs. Unbelievable. Canada across the line, minus one lap. Jokos from Japan across the line. He had a good day out as well. Paufler, he's had better days. And Genius from France. The bigger deal for France will be in the K2s tomorrow when I'm sure they're hoping for a medal. Dan Cox of Belgium. One small lap to go. That's something you can claim in itself. Didn't, what, didn't get put on the lapped column. So. Yep.
Steady Eddie. I'm sure Stefan is out there somewhere looking for the interviews because there's some good interviews to be had uh, after that race. Trust Danish Sport is going to round on this achievement for Mads Pedersen. It's often such an opportunity for, for paddle sports, which everywhere in the world, maybe Hungary excluded, is a minor sport, is a Cinderella sport. And when you have yeah. somebody that gets to the top of the pile and posts something as emphatic as this in your home country, in front of your home fans, with TV picking this all up, you need to hold them aloft and say, we're a country of great paddlers. I think the really hard thing with this is, it, unless you've done it, it's very hard to appreciate how hard it is. I mean, everyone's played football, everyone's gone for a run, everyone's ridden a bike, and, and you can all see yourself in that situation. With this, it's so hard to connect with it if you haven't tried it, that it's, uh, it's a hard sell. Pelly here. I mean, this last lap was always going to be torrid for him. We could barely paddle at the last bottom turn. and uh, Just misfiring a bit, looking forward to getting across that again, imaginary really line between race, the boys. Though. He was there for a long, long time, mixing it with the big guns. Should be pleased with what he got in the early stages of that race. Japan, 4-4-6. Four, four, Masaki Mori. He's on a minus one lap as well, but finishing and finishing strongly. Is that a grimace or a smile on Masaki's face? I think a smile. Stefan gradually assembling the big guns up at the podium. I think they're all there now. Two of the three. Mads is already in his tracksuit top. So, so a great opportunity for us to hear from the three men who are going to be on the podium a little bit later, and your new world champion. Let's go straight down to Stefan. Mats, what an amazing race. Was this according to what you had planned? Oh, I don't know. Like, I just got carried so much by, by the crowd, and I have so many emotions in the body right now, and I'm just uh, super grateful for everyone that was here today, and... To race um, against these guys, they're also my friends and they are so strong and to get away and to be able to uh, make it all the way and become home ch uh, world champion uh, in my own country, that's, the, that's just surreal. Absolutely. The, the attention you got was marvelous and the enthusiasm here on the, on the venue was absolutely amazing. Did you, uh, did you recognize that when you were paddling? Yeah, so much like... Uh, I was getting a bit tired, but uh, but the crowd they they helped me a lot. So uh, thank you to everyone, and and thank you for coming and cheering us on. You went already on the third lap. Um, that's uh, pretty early for such uh, such a long effort. Yeah, uh, I know, but uh, but it was a good chance, and uh, I didn't want to wait. Uh, so. Yeah, I wanted to use it, and uh, and I could keep up all the way. So, uh, yeah, that was just crazy. Yeah, you truly did, and it was crazy. Congratulations, Mats Brandt-Petersen. <laughs> Andy, it was a fantastic race also for you. How, how did you plan your race? Yeah, I think... Uh, Mads, today, today was his day. He really showed how strong he was, and uh, it was amazing to witness it. But there were two different races. We, uh, we were there just to witness how strong Mad was today, so congrats to him. Um, I think we were, we were just trying to limit the damage and prevent the next group from catching us. But uh, thanks, uh, thanks for all the support, everyone uh, cheering us all on, and uh, congrats to all the competitors. And Aileen, the... Both of you, together with uh, Chaussier, uh, were doing everything you could to, to uh, keep up with the speed, but it was uh, totally impossible today. Yeah, it was, and uh, I think neither of us really wanted to <laughs> go for it. I think uh, 
I think Birkin, they they uh, did a good effort, and I was maybe a bit more. Um, yeah, until yesterday night, I, I was a bit indecisive. I, I My plan was actually not to race today because I wanted to save my energy for tomorrow, but I think I'm really happy that I did now. Uh, it was a good race. Um, uh, not not that fun uh, losing the end sprint, but uh, <laughs> I'm still very happy uh, with the race today. And, um, and um, it's fun sharing the podium with, with these guys. Yeah. Yeah, it must be. I've seen you even since uh, 2011 doing so many races, and this was one of the absolute best you've ever done. Losing uh, the in sprint, you won a bronze medal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so I both uh, won and lost. Uh, you could say that. Um, um, I think in the short distance, um, I, I have a good finish, but but after 30k, it's. Uh, something is happening to the body, and, and there's a lot of cramps. And um, Andrew was uh, was <laughs> really, there was no doubt that he was uh, faster than me uh, at the end of today. So, um, congrats to both of you. Yes, and congrats all three of you. Uh, you provided a marvelous show here, here tonight. Uh, congratulations, the medalists. So just the medal presentation to come for those three awesome performances as we wrap up our day here at Lake Yells. Fantastic day, two supreme performances in both the senior women and the senior men's races. We'll have the full results for you as soon as they're available. The guys just getting their tracksuits coming in our next finisher, New Zealand. Uh, Sam Newland, just trying to see where he is on the course. Round the top turn, 500 meters to go for him. So he avoided the minus one lap, didn't get caught by Mads, even though Mads was on the charge. Same again tomorrow, but in doubles, K2s, C2s. Pretty much the same program as today. And hopefully the same level of excitement. So Sam Newland coming into the finish, wrapping up today's events. There's his lap times on screen. Pretty consistent. Coming towards the line, the last 50 meters for Sam. A bit of appreciation from the crowd. Would be much appreciated, I'm sure. Sam Newland's last few strokes across the line.
And that wraps up our day on the water. And now just the podium to fill with the three best performers of this afternoon's races. Just waiting for the guys to get their tracksuits and start the ceremony. We're hoping to get the results to you before then. Sam Newland there, a valiant attempt to get on a beautiful wave behind that boat that then sped up and left him with nothing. It was worth a punt though, Sam. I would have done the same. The results coming up now, confirmation that Mads Pedersen was a full two and a half minutes quicker around that course than anyone else. Burkett in second, Vold in third, Romalo just missed out on a medal in that sprint finish. Alonso recovered amazingly well to get fifth place ahead of Lovemore. Panacook, one of the performances of the day. Vergorven, Faria from Portugal in ninth. Tenth place, Gary Kachia, so long up with the front runners. Prada from Spain, Celier from Hungary, also in the front group for a long time. Johan Vedel, the big surprise of the day, certainly for anyone who doesn't train with him or coach him. Josh Kippen in 14th, Dorna in 15th, Jokos 16th, Palfler 17th, Genies 18th, and 19th for Pelly, James Russell, an unfortunate day for him. Pavlik, 21st, Darncox, 22nd, Sam Newlands, we've just seen come across the line in 23rd place. Lapped athletes, Chain and Maury and Ronan Foley pulled out, but he won't mind that at all after his big win yesterday in the under-23s. So for me, in commentary, that's it. We'll leave you with the medal ceremony of that race, and we will join you again tomorrow morning for more of the same. Thanks, Ivan. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your support. The middle ceremony is just about to get underway. So I would urge you to stay where you are and uh, celebrate the achievements of our three medalists. Middle ceremony will start in a couple of minutes' time. til alle jer, der kom, alle jer, der sad ude på vandet, alle de frivillige, alle, der har bidraget til det her. Jeg ved, der er over 200 frivillige, der har været i gang. Tusind tak til lurblæserne, tusind tak til atleterne for at give os en fantastisk omgang underholdning. Tusind, tusind tak til jer alle sammen, og i særdeleshed til alle de frivillige, der er med til at lave det her muligt. Tusind tak alle sammen, kom godt hjem, men fli her lige til præmiårrækkelsen. Tak, guys, and now we proceed to the medal ceremony for the men's K1. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the medalists in the men's K1. 
These medals will be presented by Tom Farshow, the president of the Danish Canoe Federation, and he will be assisted by Carson Solgaard of Denmark. The bronze medal representing Norway, Avent Vold. The silver medal, representing South Africa, Andy Burkett. The gold medal and the world champion representing Denmark, Mads Pedersen. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Denmark. Congratulations, Mads, Andrew, Island. That concludes our medal ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you. Tuck, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you keen to enjoy Saturday night in the company of champions, 
there's a program of lots of festivities, including some live music right here at the venue. So get a jacket on, get your party shoes on, and come and join us for some live music right here at the venue.
de har, de har ikke sådan... Lillebrænden på kulturen.